local, live, and interactive. This is Rogers Community Television. The following is a Rogers Sports presentation. The same poke checks it, they score! Dan Tessier on the loose puck as Greg Hewitt poke checked it. Great. The Ottawa 67s are on a roll. They have won nine games in a row, and much of the credit goes to Dan Tessier. Um, you know, I stepped it up a bit at the beginning of the season. Uh, I was lacking of uh, putting uh, the puck in the net, and uh, right now it's just everything's just falling into perspective for myself. And uh, you know, my line mates are playing well, Ben Gus and Dan Toon, and we're just working hard out there, and we're getting the chances. Can Tessier, Tuden, and Gustafson keep the 67s on the roll that they are on? We'll find out tonight when the 67s host the Toronto St. Michael's Majors on OHL Prime Time. Tonight, the Toronto St. Mike's Majors invade the nation's capital to take on the Ottawa 67s on OHL Primetime. Hi, everybody. Welcome to OHL Primetime. Welcome to the Ottawa Civic Center. I'm Howie Mooney. Tonight, we are going to see the St. Michael's Majors as they take on the Ottawa 67s. St. Mike's comes into this game they are 6-12-4 in the uh, Central Division of the OHL, but they are on a roll. They have won three in a row. They won those three games last weekend, a perfect weekend for St. Mike's. Top scorer for St. Mike's uh, is Sheldon Keith. He is a guy of tremendous intensity, tremendous focus. He's not a big guy. He's not a small guy either, but he is the guy to watch for the St. Mike's Majors. The Ottawa 67s come into th tonight's game uh, riding a nine-game winning streak. They are number one in Canada, and Brian Kilray has the luxury right now of being able to send anybody over the boards, and they seem to be getting good results. Well, I'll introduce you to the guys who are going to bring you the game tonight. Peter Tremblay, Neil Turcott. Guys, take it away. Thank you, Howie. Hi again, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in, and hello to all our friends in Toronto taking in the contest tonight. Toronto, in fact, in the house, the Ottawa Civic Centre. And, Neil, it's a game of stats on paper. Toronto having won three in a row doesn't look that bad. You know, any time a team can put together a three-game winning streak in the OHL, I mean, that's not something to be sneezed at. you got to think that they're doing something right. And what they're doing, if you look at the stats, is that they're not getting blown out in a whole lot of games. What they're doing is they're playing tight games. Goals for and against, they're only a minus 11, which is pretty average for about a 500 hockey club. So you know they're going to play a tight checking style. They're not going to let Ottawa open up or try not to let Ottawa open it up. And they're going to try and keep Ottawa, you know, maybe under two or three. And uh, then they can compete for the game like any team can. And the troops uh, that belong to Brian Kilray, certainly the depth is there. It's been there all year. Yeah. But sometimes some of the guys, they can shine. Well, you know, you don't have to look very far to figure out why this team's clicking. A guy like Dan Teshe is hitting the net like we haven't really seen before at home. And it's not because of him personally. It's his whole line, like he said in the opening. It's the whole team that's doing that. Every line, the chemistry looks really good right now. Guys like Lance Galbraith are putting on scoring clinics. I mean, when any time you can get fourth line guys, third line guys putting the puck in the net, you know your team's doing really well. And that's why they're ranked number one. All right, it's Toronto in Ottawa, a rivalry that goes well beyond sports. The drop of the puck in the first period coming up. Let's Let's go downstairs to Howie Mooney. Howie. All right, folks, don't forget to stay tuned to OHL Primetime during the first intermission. We've got a feature on 67's forward Ben Gustafson. We've also got a story on a little brouhaha that erupted between St. Mike's Majors and the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds last week. And I'll have an interview with Jeff Hunt concerning the Jeff Kugel situation. All that coming up during the first intermission. We'll be back with more of OHL Primetime right after these words, so don't go away. Our home and native land, true patriot love, in all thy sons command, car ton bras s'est porté l'épée, il s'est porté. 
porté la croix Ton histoire est une épopée Tes plus brillants exploits God keep our land Glorious and free Oh Canada We stand on God for thee Oh Canada We stand on God And a rousing rendition of our national anthem here and uh, just about ready to get underway, Toronto against Ottawa. And Neil has a starting lineup for you, folks. Well, first of all, the Toronto St. Michael's Majors starting on the blue lines, Mark Hines and Jason Cannon. And then up front, you got Ryan Barnes, Sheldon Keith, and Sean Cation. Now, Sheldon Keith is the man to watch out there. And in that will be Dwayne Bateman. Now the home side, as you take a look at the starting goaltender, Seamus Kotick, and then he's going to be protected hopefully by the likes of Luke Sellers uh, and uh, Nick Boynton on defense. Up on the wings uh, you got Dan Tudin, Ben Gustafson and in the center as he was called at the beginning of the game the little big man Dan Tessier. And the men wearing the striped shirts this evening Pat Smolo the referee for today's contest and Dave Schilling along with Chris Kitt on the lines. And right away we see a matchup between Barnes and Tessier at center ice. The captain, Ryan Barnes, against the alternate captain, Dan Tessier. 67s with their brand new jerseys unveiled at last week's contest. And they control, but Keith giving chase. Hang on, look out for this young gentleman. 67s from center, they'll dump it in, and Bateman will hang on, not taking any chances. As we take a look at tonight's scratches now, Gerald Moriarty, George Anistis, Ryan Show, Mike Jefferson, Patrick DeVigi out, the goaltender normally backing up tonight, out of action, and for Ottawa, just injuries really, Scott O'Connor, Mark Bell, and Ian Jacobs out of tonight's lineup for the 67s. You know, Neil, I mentioned Ryan Barnes, the captain, correction there, it is Keith who is wearing the C, for the majors, and that's a story in itself. We'll talk more about that. Out the draw, quick shot by Gustafson. And boy, the 67s like to use that. And a lot of times it worked. Gustafson's shot just whizzed right by Bateman. Action in the corner now. The far corner, Tudin is there. But the majors, they'll clear it. Cannon gets it up ahead for Keith. Keith trying to make the move on Sellers. Sellers has him pinned, and down he goes in the corner. Sellers. Whips it around on the near side for Dan Tudin. Tudin on the left wing. Taps it gently ahead. Gustafson can't reach it. And the Majors unable to get it out is Popovic now. He'll turn around. Works his way now into the center ice area. Takes a shot. That goes by. Seamus Kotick in between the pipes for the Ottawa 67s. Brian Campbell backhand pass to big Matt Zoltek. Zoltek working in down deep around the net. Looking to center it. Campbell was there. Sends it back to Van Hoof at the blue line. Shot blocked. Pinizzato can't get it out. Justin Davis, the man from Carlisle, Ontario, in the corner. Whips it back to Van Hoof at the blue line. Shot. Sending it in the corner. Zoltek behind the net. Zoltek looking to center it. Joe Talbo was there for a moment. Pinizzato backhands. And now through center, the Majors. They'll dump it in. Boucher. Play in the corner for Pinizzato. He's bodied off, looking to center it, or the Majors and the 67s get it out down towards Dwayne Bateman. And the icing will stop the play. 18.06 to go here in the first period. Well, we saw off the first shift, the man that everybody wants to see, Sheldon Keith, if you're a Toronto St. Mike's fan, and he was shadowed awfully closely by Dan Tudor on that first shift. And we'll have to see if that matchup continues with Tessay's line going against Keith. I'm sure Brian Kelly, though, is not uh, that worried about it. He has enough guys uh, with the speed possibly keeping with Keith. And we saw Luke Sellers do a tremendous job of shutting down Keith one on one. And look for that battle to continue as Keith is out there, and the line change has been made. Tessay's line is out there now to face against Barnes. 
The face off to the right of Seamus Kotick. The first meeting between these two players since September. It was the first game of the season for the 67s. A game which saw the 67s win 6-3. And the puck slow to drop here. As the linesman gives the boot to the majors. And it looks like Keith is jogging around there. He'll take the draw against Dan Tessier. Toronto controls from the blue line. Shot, blocker save by Kotick. Play in the corner now. Quickly behind the net. Out in front, a shot. Looks like it hit the side of the net. Toronto with control in the corner. Cannon is there. Keith looking for a loose puck. He's buzzing around. Cannon with it. Out in front for Barnes. The 67s, Gustafson mans it to Tudin. Tudin over the red line, dumps it in, and gives chase. Cation is there. Giving it ahead, Keefe with it now, over the red line. Keefe gathering some speed, takes a shot, and Kotick blockers that to the side. And Barnes is pushed into the net, and the net comes off the moorings as we take a look at number 25. Well, this will give us an opportunity to take a look at our standings in the OHL this week. As you see in the East Division, Ottawa is a top three division. In 24 games, they have amassed a whopping 42 points with a 22-2 record. And then Toronto not doing so well as they currently hold a 6-12-4 record. They have 16 points. The 67s control the draw. A couple of 71s in this contest here today. Lance Galbraith of the Ottawa 67s. And Sean Cation for Toronto. Galbraith with it. He loses it in the neutral zone. John Zion picks it up. Zion over the blue line. The shot works his way to McAllister out in front to Galbraith. The shot. But that fails to click. And the crowd behind the net, behind Bateman, thought it was in. They got a rouse out of it. On the far side, Zion sends it in to Galbraith. Galbraith is bodied off, and the Majors get it out into the neutral zone where McLean turns around at his line and headmans it up ahead for Galbraith. On the left side, Galbraith in there all alone. He's got about four white jerseys around him. Penizzato sending it back in for Cava. Cava on the far side into the neutral zone. Seamus Kotick stops it behind his own net, backhands it right to a Majors player, and the 67s lose it at the blue line. Unable to keep it in is Cava. A two-on-one developing here in the corner. It's Boone. Boone is tied up. Kanopka with it. Kanopka looking to center it. Kanopka wearing number 20 now for the 67s. Formerly number 15, but there's a reason why he's not wearing number 15 anymore. Now take a look at number 22, Luke Sellers, who in 24 games has put on a pretty impressive clinic for himself. He's been holding himself up rather well. Let's take a look at the chance here for, this is Lance Galbraith on the touch across. Lance pulls the trigger as he got a nice setup there. Andrek Alfredson's line doing a good job of getting the puck low. Getting an early scoring opportunity for Ottawa. But uh, again, uh, Matt Zoltek's line was ready to jump out and onto the ice. And then they saw that Keith's line was out there. So Teste's line hits the ice. So uh, Brian Kilray obviously wants to go head to head with the number one lines. And uh, you got to think Mark Napier is not going to be using a whole lot of depth, and that might hurt Ottawa in the long run. From the blue line, Sellers shot right on. Bateman steers that to the sideboards. Tudin looking for a loose puck, but Cation working his way behind the net. Gathering some speed, works his way into the neutral zone, sends it ahead for Barnes. Barnes on the right side for Keefe. Keefe in the corner, leaves it for Barnes. 67s, get it ahead. Tudin with it. Has to backpedal. Tudin behind his net for Boynton. Boynton in the far corner, turns around, and right away there's a major on him. Tudin chasing after a loose puck. Cation is there. Cation beats him to it, and another icing will stop the play here. 15 16 to go, still scoreless in the first period. Cation had to really push it in the last few feet as Dan Tudin realized that he actually had a play on that puck and turned it up. And Sean Cation was equal to the task as he just put the burners on and got to that puck in the corner. 
Good physical play and good job to stay with the puck. He knew he had to position off Tudin, but at the same time, he had to get the stick on the puck. As we'll take a look at Seller's shot from the point. And the save by Bateman. Ryan Walsh on the draw. Toronto controls for a moment. Zoltek, though, hops on the loose puck and banks it off the boards down the ice. Boucher off the glass, can't get it out. Zoltek pinching in, and right in front of the net is Davis looking for a loose puck. Play out in front now in the faceoff circle, and Talbot jumps on the aforementioned loose puck. Zoltek spinning around his man. Still with it in the corner is Matt Zoltek. Zoltek kicks it in front of the net, looking to center it. And then heads right towards the boards. Simpson is there to tango with Zoltek, and a couple of fists are thrown. Well, it got to be careful here as Matt Zoltek just got on the ice to get a shift and uh, got in and started kicking at the feet of the St. Mike's player who had the puck pinned against the boards. And I'm not sure what Pat Small is going to call here, but it'd be pretty easy to call both. And both doors are opening. As it getting, I think, roughing penalties to both guys. Let's take a look at the puck up in the air. Bounces over Talbot. Zoltek just flips out. It was bouncing, goes toward the net. Deflected by Davis, who parked himself in front of the net. And the puck was still squirting around. And there's Zoltek on the side. Now watch the feet. Watch what he's doing with the feet. Kicking, kicking, kicking. And then in comes Boucher. And gives him a bit of a shot. And Zoltek just kind of took the first shot to uh, try and draw the penalty. But Smola having nothing to do with either of these sort of tactics after the whistle and calls them both and sits them down. So Chris Boucher and Matt Zoltek in the sin bin for a couple of minutes. McAllister on the draw against Kenny Karup. McAllister tossed out. Lance Galbraith will take it. And the uh, linesmen are very particular here early on in the first period. Still some footwork by both players, and uh, Galbraith is sent out again. 67's unable to control the draw, but they try to keep it in at the blue line. Unable to do that either as the uh, delayed offside is called, and another faceoff just outside Toronto's line. Well, a little bit of a timing play. Van Hoof and Campbell were just kind of unsure of the positioning. Let's take a look at Chris Cava from the Toronto St. Mike's. Cavill, one of the more experienced players on the Toronto St. Mike's team. Karup wins the draw. Popovic with it. Popovic doesn't see the return pass. On the far side for Kava. Back to Popovic. Loses it. Galbraith looking for the loose puck. It's Henrik Alfredson. Throws it in the corner. Galbraith with it now on the near side. Lance Galbraith to the blue line for Campbell. Takes a shot. That was deflected in the Let's corner. Go Let's go, guys! Brock Boucher now on the far side. Hanging on, a lot of open ice out there. 67 a shot, that whistles wide, that by Galbraith. And all the way down into Ottawa's end. Giving chase is Van Hoof, Jeremy Van Hoof on the left wing for Galbraith. Galbraith slaps it on the cross ice side for Brian Campbell. And Campbell looks like he dragged it in and the offside is called. And Kyle McAllister took exception to that and went over and gave a bit of a bump as Alfredson had a really good shift out there, caused a couple of Toronto St. Mike's players to force the puck a little more than they really wanted to. And no surprise at all, there's going to be another line change as Tessie's line is going to come out as Keith's out there. And you know, something that really impressed me about Keith, he said, Peter, he's the captain. But not too many people probably really, except for the Toronto fans. He's also a rookie on this team, and he's leading the league in scoring. So obviously St. Mike's have put a lot of stock in this young man. John Zion off the draw, sends it into Toronto's end. Cation with it. Cation can't find the left winger as Ben Gustafson is there to intercept. Gustafson looking for Zion. Zion along the boards. Shot towards the net, redirected just wide. Bateman a little bit lucky there. Zion has the puck get by him. Seamus Connick just steers it ahead for the man from Nepean, Jonathan Zion, to Tudin. Tudin has Keefe on him. Gets by him at the red line and kicks it into Toronto's end. Gustafson is bodied off by Cation. The Majors can't get it out. Tessier back at the blue line, point. Juggles with a little bit, and now into the center ice zone for Zion. Zion works it into Toronto's end. 
Barnes trying to get it out. Can't. Zion stops it there. Sends it right in. Cation. Gives it to Cannon. Cannon is decked right in front of his bench. Hines with it. Up along the far side. Point. Point to Gustafson. Gustafson's drop pass is picked off by Walsh. On the left side. Out in front shot, they score! Ryan Walsh, bang, bang, right in front of Seamus Kotick, makes it 1-0 Toronto. And that's the result of a very lackadaisical play by the 67 defense, and good forechecking by St. Mike's. They put three guys into the zone, chasing after the dump in, and Kotick kind of hesitated about playing it, went out and just kind of fanned on it, missed the puck. Let's take another look at it, watch. Off to the side, Kotick doesn't get the stick down. He changed the position on the grip and didn't have the stick in his hand properly. We saw Ryan Walsh jump on the loose puck. See, Walsh was in. Saw three St. Mike's players in low trying to get after that puck. No matter what side it went to, St. Mike's was gonna try and be there for it. And they were that time as they opened scoring. Popovic over Ottawa's line takes a shot and is gloved high by Seamus Kotick who went down to make the save. Well, Kotick just reached out the glove on that and just wanted to reel, reel it in. As you know, he's not very happy with himself. He's very particular about how he plays, and he takes a long time before the game setting up mentally, and he knows that that was a mental mistake, and he's going to try and refocus, and that's what he'll have to do if St. Mike's keeps putting the pressure on. McLean on the left side for Zoltek. Zoltek looking for Talbot. At Toronto. Putting a lot of men in the neutral zone to stymie any Ottawa effort. And the whistle is stopped. And we get some jousting right in front of Seamus Kotick, about 20 feet or so in front of him. And Smola is right in there and keeping an eye on things. As he's, I think he's picked out two guys. And I don't think this will be uh, any penalties coming out of this. As Smola was just quite happy to get in there and just tell the guys to relax a bit. Shoving aside, things come to a bit of a halt. And again, the quick line change by Mark Napier's team as Keith comes out, and again, Tessie's line comes out. And really, Mark Napier only using the equivalent of about two lines as he puts Keith's, Keith's line out every second line and then alternates whatever he's got left. 67s are doing the same, matching line for line. Ottawa losing another faceoff. They haven't won too many here early on in the contest. Tessier gives it to Campbell. Brian Campbell on the left side for Van Hoof. Play in the neutral zone. Campbell sees Barnes coming in on him. Shot right on. Kotick leaves that for Gustafson. 67s. Dan Tessier gets it out, works his way through the center ice line. Tessier making the move. Backhand shot saved by Bateman. Tessier now behind the net with Cation and Barnes. Loose puck for Gustafson behind the net. Hines is on him. Tudin bodying his man. Tessier trying to get it back at the blue line for Campbell, who was pinching. But that's to no avail, and the puck dribbles down to Seamus Kotick. And Keith is sent into the net. The net again off its moorings. Well, credit the sportsmanship of Keith for not running Seamus Kotick, as he could have very easily probably got away with a little bit of a bump and run on Seamus Kotick. And instead, he did everything in his powers and showing the talented footwork that he uses during offensive play at that time, using it to avoid any instance as he came in tight on Kotick. They see Barnes down the side, gets the shot away. Big rebound comes out front again. As a St. Mike's player got dumped to the ice, as the play was in the middle. Tessie down the other way, backhand one hander towards the net, and then he gets crushed and in behind the net. Tessie trying to do it on his own that time. Zoltek out there taking the draw with Carew, 67s in the corner, and now on the near side, it's Talbot looking for Zoltek. But Campbell is there, backing it up. Campbell is bodied off by Rasmussen. Davis with Rasmussen on him. Behind the net, Zoltek looking out for someone in front. Talbot was there for a moment. Campbell with it. Campbell at the blue line. A shot right on. Campbell looking for a deflection in front as he didn't let loose on that shot. Shots from the point don't always have to be howitzers, but Campbell wisely looking for a deflection. Davis with it on the far side. Trying to kick it to Talbot. 
St. Mike's doing a good job of hemming in the 67s here in the first period. 10.33 to go. It's 1-0 Toronto. In the corner now. Boucher with it. Boucher out in front. Karouf looking for the shot. That goes into the corner and the 67s get it down the ice. Mark Hines touches it up for the icing call. 10-17 to go here in the first. Well, credit to St. Mike's defense in the first half of that shift. Ryan Rasmussen, number eight, and Chris Boucher of just shutting down Brian Campbell as he jumped up to the attack and taking position and passing lanes away. Campbell in the crossover. As you see the pass back to the point, Campbell winds up, gets the shot through. Nice low shot, little off speed. Davis gets the deflection, but Bateman down low covering all the holes. Stops that little black biscuit from getting past the red line. Play in the neutral zone now, Popovic. Popovic dumps it in. Ellis on the near side, gives it to Cava, shot. Steered behind the net for Kotick. Play in the corner, 67s. Henrik Alfredson, he can't get it out. Good job of forechecking by the Majors. At the red line, Cava. Cross ice for Popovic, he'll dump it in. Luke Sellers is there with it for Ottawa. Sellers loses control, but McAllister picks it up. Galbraith now for Alfredson. Alfredson is leveled by Cava, and the crowd felt that. I think Alfredson had a thing or two to feel about it too, and now we've got a scrap in Toronto's end. Not much of a scrap, but more of a turtle action. As I didn't see what happened, I was looking towards the, the bench and watched Alfredson get decked. And I guess Lance Galbraith decided to take things into his own hands and even up that score. But Cava caught Alfredson with his head down. Alfredson, he knows better. You should never have your head down coming through what uh, Cherry calls the train tracks or the trolley tracks, and that's the blue line. Alfredson had his head down watching the puck, and he got run by very experienced number five, Chris Cava. Chris Cava just saw, had his head down turned into him as he was back checking, looking on position. Cavan realized there was a great opportunity there and just drilled Alfredson. Lance Galbraith took exception to that and decided to go put a little bit of a hurt on Chris Cavan. You can see the results of that on the ice by the faceoff dot. I think Lance Galbraith probably figured he had someone to dance with as Cava has the uh, penalty minute lead on his hockey club with 98 minutes coming into tonight's game. And also, during that play, Nick Boynton went off with an injury, Peter. I saw that happen. Here's again, look, Alfredson's got his head down. Doesn't see Cava as he's just starting to look up. And he gets run, absolutely run. Kind of say that uh, Alfredson just got vaporized by Cava. Well, it was a clean hit by Cava absolutely. on Alfredson. Absolutely. And all that Lance Galbraith wants to do is to get his guys into this game because so far, after nearly 12 minutes of play here. But he's going to hurt his team as a result in the last 11 games at home. 9-1-1 one, one record for the out 67s. But right now trailing here a little over halfway through the first period. Lance Galbraith has been sent away from the ice surface into the dressing room. Maybe an early shower for him for jumping. There's seven minutes up on the board right now. So, so one thing that's really interesting right now is that a power play from a team that's second last in the division. Lance Galbraith, two minutes for instigating, five minutes for fighting and a game misconduct. No surprise there. But as I was saying, Peter, I'll give it to you quick. The, League's second best power play, uh, both on the road and overall, is going into action now, and that's a big surprise. Keith looking for Barnes in front. Barnes is in the corner now. Campbell is on top of him, and the whistle will stop Good it up job. here. Campbell, smart play. Shadowing on Keith. Keith falls down. Sorry, it was not Keith that fell down there. Barnes is the one that fell on the puck. And then Campbell just kind of fell over him, and it puts his hand on the puck and brings it in. That's a good move. Watch here, gets knocked down. Barnes just goes awkwardly into the boards. Campbell tries to get to the puck to take off, gets knocked down, so he says, okay, we can solve this. I'll take Barnes into the boards, and I'll bring the puck into us, and that should stop things up. Now, getting back to Lance Galbraith, that is yeah. probably the only thing we'll say about him, because he's gone now. He was just trying to get his team into the game with uh, 
sometimes not the wisest timing. And he certainly is paying for that. I, but Cab has been around and Lance Galbraith has been around too, Peter. It's a very good point. And I think maybe what happened there is Lance Galbraith thought he had a dance partner. He thought Cava's the type of player that will go with him normally. That time Cava did. Cava showed great discipline and drew a seven minute power play. Good job by Cava. The 67s with control. They'll get it down the ice and kill off some valuable TikToks here off the clock. And behind his net now it's Popovic. He'll give it to Keith. The rookie, Keefe, over the red line and gains Ottawa's territory. Stops up on the far side, the 67s. Pick it off, and Keefe quickly strips Gustafson of the puck. Tessier jumping on a loose one, backhands it out into the neutral zone. Popovic recovers. On the near side for Kation. Tessier eyeballing him. Ahead for Barnes. Barnes just backhands it in, and Luke Sellers with it. Sellers to Campbell. And that tandem will head off on a line change. Bateman with Tudin all over him. Sends it on the left side for Walsh. Boucher trying to work it in. He's got it now. Back at the blue line for Cannon. Cannon shot. That's stopped in front of the net. Back to Cannon at the blue line. A shot. And another block by Point. Play in the near side. Tudor just turns around and fires it down the ice. 5.25 to go in the power play and 7.53 to go in the first period. It's 1-0 Toronto. Mark Hines on the right side for Walsh. Walsh is stripped by the puck. On the far side. Talbot trying to bother his man. Play at center. Cannon off his stick. Into Ottawa's end for Nick Boynton, the captain of the Ottawa 67s. Nick Boynton fires it off the boards and down the ice. Ottawa really needs to kill off this penalty and try to sustain some pressure, something we know they can do. We've seen it happen before. Barnes with it over Ottawa's line. Puck knocked off his stick at the blue line for Carew. Sends it ahead for Barnes and the 67s get it out. And the one thing 67s are doing really well, Peters, they're jumping on the puck and the man carrying it really quickly. And that's forcing St. Mike's to move it a little quicker than they want to and they're not allowed to set up once they get into 67 zone. Barnes takes the pass from Keith. Keith is tripped up at the blue line. Play goes right on. Tessier, Tessier gets it out. Gustafson giving chase, almost picks up a loose puck. Sean Cation. side he loses it Popovic trying to get it in the 67s Ben Gustafson to Tessier and a two-line pass will whistle it down and that was close oh was it ever Tessier though just jumped off after that puck trying to build up some speed his timing was a little off at least I think they're calling it a two-line pass sure looked like it and Dan Tudin did a tremendous job he killed off I think it was two and a half minutes of that power. I mean, he wasn't by himself, but he was one of the main reasons two and a half minutes went by without any quality scoring opportunity. And I believe they didn't even get a shot on net. Campbell for the 67s. Sends it into Toronto's end. Cation is there. Cation stops up behind Bateman quickly. On the right side for Popovic. Popovic can't go any further than Ottawa's line. Cation now. Cation looking for Pinizzato, but Popovic has it. Popovic on the left side for Walsh. That doesn't work. Now on the near side is Boucher. Boucher turns around, slaps it in, and caught it. Leaves it there for Campbell. Campbell to Van Hoof. Van Hoof sends it into the neutral zone and down the ice. 5.40 to go in the first period. Well, the league's third best penalty killing unit is doing a tremendous job as every 67 player is going to see some ice time. It's so far been extremely effective once the St. Mike's get past their own blue line. Karuk working his way in. In the corner now, back to Cannon at the blue line. On the left side for Boucher. Behind the net, Zion taps it in the corner. Talbot is there. He'll get it down the ice. 2.40 to go here. In the man advantage for Toronto. Carew 
trying to get by Tudin. Tudin, as you mentioned, Neil, doing a good job of killing the penalty. Boucher with it. That's Chris Boucher. Pa backhand pass to Karoop. Karoop over the red line. Feeds Cannon. Cannon into Ottawa's end. A wrist shot. Steered into the corner by Cotton. Boynton is there. Cannon with it. Cannon feeding it ahead to Keefe. And Keefe's shot nowhere near the net as it's blocked in front. Cannon to Keefe. Keefe is bodied. But the Major still with control, looking to Barnes in front of the net. Zion goes. Zion in the corner. Off the boards for Boynton. A minute 53 to go on the power play for Toronto. Is there any doubt in your mind, Peter, that the 67s know who the man to stop is? As Nick Boynton was way up on Keith when he was up on the boards. They gave him absolutely no room, and they gave him a bit of a rough, and he was lucky not to take a penalty for it. Ryan Walsh trying to work his way through center. Dan Tessier had him lined up. Walsh neatly stepped aside. On the near side now. Boucher with it in the corner. Boucher out in front for Walsh. Walsh's shot is blocked. Kotick is down, play behind the net. And Toronto works it in the corner, but Gustafson jumps on the loose puck and fires it down the ice. I don't think Gustafson saw Dan Tessie break it through the middle. Gustafson knowing that this is the end of a long penalty kill, just happy to get a lane to throw it down. Tessie trying to draw a penalty. Fans bought it. <laughs> 5,000 referees looking for the call as well. Cannon now up ahead looking for Barnes. 54 seconds to go in Toronto's penalty. And Toronto with a little bit of control in spurts, but not really sustaining any real pressure on the 67s. Keefe with it now. Over the red line. And again, Toronto can't penetrate Ottawa's zone. Popovic. Popovic ahead for Cannon. Cannon to Karuk. Loose puck in front. Sellers can't clear it. Popovic had it in his skates and jumping on the loose puck was Sellers. He slaps it down the ice to Bateman. Dan Tudin has been out there for, I think, about six minutes out of these seven on the penalty kill. On the left side, it's Simpson. Ten seconds to go on the power play. Simpson in the corner now. It is Dan Tudin. Tudin gives it to Talbot. Penalty is over. Good job, 67s. Talbot can't make the move. And Cavill with it on the left side for Simpson. Point. Stops him in his tracks. Talbot with it now. He's stripped of the puck. Nick Point sends it in. Bateman behind the net. Peter, only two shots on net on that seven-minute power play. Zion gives it to Boynton. Boynton wraps it off the boards and Hines with it now for Toronto. Cava's bodied off. 67s. Have to retrace their steps into their own end. Boynton. Backhand pass to Alfredson. Henrik Alfredson, number 11 for the Ottawa 67s. Rasmussen with it at the red line. He'll send it in the corner. Giving chase is Nick Boynton, but the whistle will stop the play. A minute 42 to go here in the first period. It's still 1-0 Toronto. All right, thanks, guys. Coming up during the first intermission, we've got a story on a fight that took place uh, between the Toronto St. Mike's Majors and the Sioux Greyhounds a week and a half ago. We've also got... A profile on forward uh, for the 67s, Ben Gustafson, and I'll have it. I have an interview coming up with 67s owner Jeff Hunt. All that coming up in the first intermission. Thank you, Howie. The face-off, right near the red line. It'll be Karoop against Joe Talbot. As we take a look at Kenny Karoop. Toronto with a glorious opportunity to increase their lead, but it wasn't going to happen in the first period. Zolte in a, Toronto's end. A shot out in front. They score! Joe Talbot on the backhand ties it up. It's one goal apiece. Okay, here's a seven-minute swing in the momentum, Peter. You said, you said correctly, Galbraith trying to maybe get something going, and the result isn't exactly what he intended. But now you look back on it and you say they killed a seven-minute power play, and now on their first full shift afterwards, a backhander by Talbot from Davis, as Davis hasn't seen much ice time. He sets up Talbot. Take a look at this. Pucks around the boards. Davis chips it out on the timing pattern. 
And Talbot is the lucky receiver of that pass, and he just back it. He didn't wait to do anything fancy. He didn't try to move to the forehand. He didn't try to fake and shake and bake and all the rest of that. What he did, he got the puck, he let it go. On the backhand, forehand, didn't matter to him. He let it go, and it was beautifully aimed into the corner. And lucky for Ottawa to be tied right now at this point in the hockey game. So you're saying Lance Galbraith had a say in that goal. Is that what you're trying to tell me, Neil? I'll think about it. Tessier shot right on Bateman with the save. And all of a sudden, Ottawa's got a bit of momentum here at the end of the period. Yeah, I guess in a kind of twisted kind of way, you're saying, yes, Lance Galbraith had a say in the goal. It's not the type of say you want to have. There's no way they, Ottawa should have been down for seven minutes. But that's not the point. The point is, what's the result of the play? The result of the play is that Ottawa developed an emotional high by killing off seven minutes, and St. Mike's are probably feeling a little frustrated, and they had just relaxed after the power play, relaxed for one shift, and they got burnt. Tudin looking for a loose puck in front of Bateman. And the puck is sent into the crowd. A minute nine to go here in the first period. It's now locked up at one goal apiece. Well, the one thing the seven minutes uh, of penalty killing does do is that there's a couple of guys on this line, like Dan Tudin, who are going to be a little more fatigued than they normally are after one period of plays. You see him, what he's doing right now, he's not skating because he's got all this energy. He's skating because he's tired. He's just trying to keep the legs loose. They're going to start tightening up now. There's only a minute left, and he's trying to catch some wind. As you see him now on his stick, he's the one right in the middle of your screen. And St. Mike's will have some fresh legs because they didn't really have to work quite as hard as O'Keefe jumps early. Tessier and Barnes on the draw, and you saw Keefe leave his position early. And now Keefe will come in to take the face off against Tessier. Campbell and Van Hoof are poised at the point. Puck comes back to Campbell. He'll backhand it into Tessier. Tessier for Gustafson out in front. Van Hoof now shot over the net. Cannon now. Cannon has Keefe streaking on the right side. Keefe stops up on the near side, looking out in front for Cannon. Van Hoof sends it behind the net. Barnes is there. That gets by him. Cation has Campbell in front of him, but Campbell had the puck. Tudin. Tudin to Gustafson. Under a minute to play here in the first period. Cannon gives it to Cation. Barnes with it at the red line. He'll just shoot it in. And Van Hoof is there. Van Hoof leaves it for Campbell. Campbell in front of the net to Tudin. Tudin at the red line, looking to center it. And I think that line is tired. Gustafson's heading off. Tudin and Tessier don't have that luxury right now. Five seconds to go here in the first period. And another whistle will stop the play. You called it, Peter. This is one tired lineup. And St. Mike's, you could see they were kind of taking the play to him as the timing was off, the passing wasn't as crisp, the flow wasn't as good for Ottawa as what we're used to seeing, and that is a direct result of the ice time that they've had to put out in the first period. Both double shifting because they're going against Keith's line, man up every time, but then also because, again, of the seven-minute penalty kill situation that Ottawa faced. And that line having gone off, they're going to keep Ben Gustafson out there. And look where he is poised. Dan Tessier as well is staying out to take the draw. And that's their little key play. They're going to try to get Tessier to draw it back to T Gustafson on the bang-bang play. Yep, we saw this before. It worked effectively twice. Kenny Karoop taking the draw for Toronto. Four seconds to go. Lots of time to make something happen here. Tessier wins the draw. Was looking for Gustafson. Campbell with it in the corner. And that'll do it for the first period, but the 67s had the plan. Yeah, and I'm really surprised, actually, that they didn't even pull Seamus Kotick out and try and put an extra man down there. It was close time-wise, though. It was close time-wise. There was enough time to send it down the ice, and you don't want to have a change of momentum in the last few seconds. Brian Kilroy played it safe, set up the bang-bang play, as you called it, and that time didn't work. They won the draw, but luckily they didn't get it back because uh, I believe it was... Number 20 streaking through the middle, Matt Ellis. Could have picked it off and gone all the way. There's your score, 1-1 after one. You're watching OHL Primetime. We'll be right back with our first intermission after this.
Welcome back to OHL Primetime. 1-1 the score between the Toronto St. Michael's Majors and the Ottawa 67s. And you could feel the collective sigh of relief here at the Civic Centre when Joey Talbot scored that goal for the 67s. Well, a couple of weeks ago, about a week and a half ago, actually, the St. Michael's Majors were involved in a, uh, a wild brouhaha. I've used that word a few times tonight. A wild scene with the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. And tonight we've got a story on that very, very night. 10-16, the time of the penalties, Josh Bennett, unsportsmanlike conduct, and here's some unsportsmanlike conduct, look at this, what a melee, gloves and sticks flying all over the place as the players are scrumming in the major zone inside the blue line, and that was almost like a little brush fire, Glenn, it just quickly ignited and turned into a free-for-all, and Nick Jones right in the middle of it, he takes another shove at Brian Simpson after the fact, and this Jones has gone crazy, uh, Simpson the second player he's tangled with in this scuffle. I tough, but I, I certainly was impressed with Jones. Uh, Jones walking around sucker punching people in the fray and you know once people are being held I mean when you're as tough as Jones is and he is a legitimate tough player I don't think there's any need to be walking around and popping guys when they're already being held but it was an isolated incident and I'm sure the league's gonna get the tape and they'll judge what they can do with it I mean. Ryan Sims and they, it's still going in front of the Greyhounds bench Mike Nelson is wailing at one of the major players Brian Simpson over to help, and now Daniel Passero. Passero has jumped on Simpson and four of them in a pile. Passero jumped Look at Mike up. Jefferson. Jefferson has skated out of the penalty box, and it's like a football scrum. He's dived on top of the pile. Mike Jefferson. Uh, Mike Jefferson's a very emotional player. Uh, he stands by his teammates, and uh, I think his emotions got the best of him there, and, and they also get to the fact that uh, Sheldon Keefe's probably his best friend he's got, and I don't really know how he can end up with three Sioux guys on the ice and two of our guys on the ice, and I don't know. I mean, it comes down to accountability, and yeah, I mean, if the dressing room, if the penalty door is locked, it's all would have been and should have been. I mean, I'm sure when he looks back at it and whenever the ruling comes down, whatever it is, you never see he's going to be, there will probably be some extra actions for coming out of the box. But I mean, you've got not only you just have a teammate down, but it's your best friend, and there's an odd number situation. I mean, all the stuff that's gone on around the league, there's no way I'm sending anybody off the bench to get involved. And, and you hope that guys can just tie each other up so nobody really gets hurt. But I guess his emotions got the best of him. And, uh, you know, he's going to be held accountable for his actions, no doubt, by the league. And uh, he's not a kid that we can really afford to lose. But we have to see what the league rules. Uh, this is one of the more complex fight situations I've ever seen in this league. Uh, it just started quickly. Two players, I can't even recall which two. And then before you knew it, all ten players in the ice were involved as they all quickly paired off, but it, it wasn't the usual pairing off. They all started swinging. I mean, tonight was an isolated incident, and I mean, uh, we've got some tough kids, and when they see their teammates get taken advantage of, you know, it's part of the game to come to the defense of your teammates, and, you know, you never want anything to isolate or to escalate into something like happened tonight, but, I mean, as you saw, I'm sure when you look at it, if you see someone walking around sucker punching your member of your family, you've got to react to it, and I think that's what happened, and... It's unfortunate, but we'll have to see how it's ruled on. All right, thanks, David Bradshaw. We'll be back with more of OHL Primetime, folks, right after these words, so stay tuned. back and whenever Brian Kilroy has to look around the room for leadership he doesn't have to look far there are a number of guys on the 67's team who are capable of uh, being a leader either on or off the ice the hottest line right now for the 67's has been the line of Dan Tessier Ben Gustafson and Dan Tudin and today we have a look at 67's forward Ben Gustafson Ben Gustafson's a veteran of the OHL not everyone stays in the league and he says hard work and great support have helped him stick around I think it's been hard work and coming to work every day in practice with uh, a good coach and a good good teammates and good linemates that I've been able to play with. I've been fortunate to play with some pretty good players the last couple of years and they've showed me some things that I've tried to take to a new level. Some players stand out as tough to play against. Gustafson says goalies are the ones he remembers as being tough. Well, first couple of years we always had problems with Corey Cooper and uh, Belleville as a goaltender. I mean, it always seems to be a goaltender every time he has their number. So. I'd have to say him or the year after that we had uh, Mark Savard was definitely a key player that kind of 
sunk our hopes that one year. As for great players he's played with, a current Maple Leaf comes to mind. Al McCauley, he'd have to be the best. Uh, he's just such a good player at both ends of the rink, and he's a good example for all the players to learn from. Family, as for every player, is an important part of developing as a player and a person, and Gustafson's case is no different. Uh, my family's been very supportive of me ever since I started my hockey career at a young age, and uh, you know, whether it's driving you know, to games when you're a young kid, or even now just providing the emotional support that a player might need, they've always been there for me. Born in the USA, but having grown up in Canada, Gustafson considers himself Canadian, but the dual citizenship has given him some great opportunities. Uh, I have dual citizenship. I was born in Salt Lake City, and uh, I've grown up in Canada and consider myself to be a Canadian, actually, but I had to take the opportunity because it's a good opportunity for my hockey career, and I just let them know that I had dual citizenship, and they came out and scouted me and gave me an opportunity. Players pick numbers for lots of reasons, but for Gustafson, why choose 19? Uh, Steve Eisman was my favorite player growing up. I was, uh, grew up pretty close, pretty close to Detroit, and uh, Steve Eisman was always my favorite player to watch. For OHL Primetime, I'm Zach Martin. All right, we're back on OHL Primetime. We're with the owner of the Ottawa 67s, Jeff Hunt. And uh, Jeff, you're just back from a, a meeting of the team governors. You were talking about the Jeff Kugel situation. Uh, what happened? Well, basically, uh, following the, in, in effect, the lifetime suspension of Jeff Kugel, uh, the Windsor Spitfires and Jeff Kugel appealed it. And uh, as per our constitution, we have to have a board of governors meeting. And uh, all the governors were in attendance in Toronto today. And uh, we uh, heard from the Kugel um, camp, if you want. He was there with his lawyer, um, Lawrence Greenspawn. And, uh, so they spoke for a while, and then we had uh, some representatives from the Windsor Spitfires kind of making his case, and uh, Dave Branch summarized what his uh, rationale was for imposing, uh, you know, a, a fairly uh, significant uh, penalty or suspension. And then the Board of Governors had a chance to discuss it um, without uh, Commissioner Branch or anybody from Windsor or Jeff Kugel in the room. and. Uh, I guess you could say at the end of the day we decided that uh, indeed Dave Branch did act reasonably and, uh, and within his guidelines as commissioner and we uh, upheld his decision. Now I understand you, up, you did uphold the decision but there's a change, a little change in the, uh, the whole situation as opposed to what happened originally, isn't there? Yeah, there is and actually uh, I only heard about it myself when I got back to Ottawa and read the press release that was issued by the league. And I guess what they did was uh, most of the governors had to get home, as you can imagine. We, most of us had games mm -hmm. tonight. So we all left, and uh, I guess the commissioner decided to amend his uh, decision slightly in that at the end of the season or the prior to the commencement of next season, uh, there is an opportunity for Jeff Kugel to apply for reinstatement. <clears throat> now, I'm, not <clears throat> I'm not exactly sure what it is that uh, they'll, what kind of criteria they'll use for reinstating him, but... Uh, they did, they did open up that window for him to potentially get uh, reinstated into the league. You've, you've played hockey in your life. Everybody's played hockey. And something that, that has been going around arenas all over the place in the last month or so is, was the penalty too harsh? 20 years ago, I'm sure this kind of thing, he might have got a suspension, but not necessarily a lifetime ban. Uh, do you think it was all right? Do you think it was a, a sufficient ban? Well, you know, uh, our league is about family entertainment and developing hockey players and developing hockey skills, and it's not about what we saw. And uh, I think Dave Branch tried to make a strong message. All right, Jeff, thanks a lot for your time, and uh, continued success to you in the 67s. Thank you. We'll be back with more of OHL Primetime and the second period, folks, right after these words. Let's take you. back 1-1 one, one is your score Ryan Walsh tallying for the Toronto St. Michael's Majors and Joe Talbot for the Ottawa 67s Luke Sellers talking it up with his netminder as you call it there's that first scoring first period scoring summary Walsh unassisted marker on the sort of dump in and then Kotick touches it up so that erased all the assists that were based on that play and Talbot with some help from Zoltek on a nice play by Davis Davis set it up 
and just tossed it out front. So Talbot from Davis and Zoltek is actually how that one happened. And this face-off to the left of Seamus Kotick. And the 67s get it out. Popovic with it behind his own net. Up ahead on the left side for Tava. That gets by him into the neutral zone. Simpson hit up along the boards, and the whistle will bring about a stoppage of play. You know, Peter, we can look at, at that first period and break it down into three segments or three mini periods, if you wish. The first period, the first part would be, say, like the first 10 minutes where the St. Mike's team was really taking it to Ottawa. The, the number one line of Keith was doing a job and really dominating the play and dominated on the shots, too. Brian Campbell in his own end turns around and gives it. On the other side to Jeremy Van Hoof. It's intercepted by the Majors, and Seamus Kotick doesn't want to take any chances. He hangs on for the faceoff to his left. And then, sorry, Peter, go the ahead. Second part the second our, part of our mini story. The story within a story. The second part is the penalty kill, a seven minute penalty kill that Otto was able to kill off. And then. That's a, as a result of Lance Galbraith taking an instigating penalty, a fighting penalty, and Cava just turtled up and didn't do anything. So Galbraith gets sent with a game misconduct. He won't be back. Seven-minute penalty. Ottawa kills it, and then they move into the third frame, which is two shifts after killing off seven minutes of, of penalty. They get a goal. They even things up, and that's just the emotional plus that they needed. And they took that goal late in the first period into the locker room with them, and something that a coach likes to see if it happens for him. The Majors... Can't get to the puck first. The icing is waved off on the right side. Now into the neutral zone. It's Cannon with it. Cannon trying to beat Campbell. Takes a shot steered in the corner by Campbell. Campbell now with it behind his net. Gives it to Van Hoof. 67 seem to be a step behind the Toronto St. Michael's Majors. Gustafson to center for Tessier. Shot right on. Saved by Dwayne Bateman. As Tessier finally takes matters into his own hands. He just fires a long shot on Bateman. Who he had no trouble seeing it, finally getting tested. Get it? Tested? As you see here, here's Tessier, steps across the blue line, doesn't waste any time crossing the blue line, which allows his linemates to keep going, but Bateman does a great job of giving up absolutely zero rebounds, takes that in the pads, and just smothers it. Now Ottawa gets a chance to win the draw in the St. Mike's end of the rink. Face off to the right of Bateman coming into the contest with a 3.80 goals against average. Sixty sevens on the loose puck. It's Matt Zoltek gives it to Talbot. Talbot in the corner. He loses it. Caught up in some skates. Karoop. He's being bothered by big Matt Zoltek on the right side. And shooting it down the ice is Pinizzotto. John Zion loses his stick for no apparent reason. Zion chasing after his man. And a wise move by Davis as he kicks John Zion's stick towards the melee. Davis, he'll send it in the corner. And Rasmussen turns around and can't get it out. Stopping it up is McLean at the blue line once, but not twice. Play in the neutral zone. McLean, backhand pass on the near side for John Zion. Right back to McLean. McLean shoots it in. Boucher gets it out. Alfredson now gives it to Boynton. Boynton over the red line, fires it in. Bateman leaves it there for Boucher. Boucher around the boards, keeping it in is John Zion at the blue line. Zion can't get it any further as the Majors break it out. Down the length of the ice. Icing is waved off by Chris Kitt. And with it now is Nick Boynton. On the right side for Miguel DeLille. His pass is almost picked off by Simpson. Simpson with it, a wrist shot saved by Kotick. Boynton can't back it out of trouble. In the corner now. Ellis with it. On the near side, Ellis backhands it in. Boynton now behind his own net. Nick Boynton on the right side for DeLille. DeLille, McAllister, and Alfredson. The line out there for Brian Kilray. Alfredson on Walsh. McAllister gives it behind the net for DeLille. Loose puck along the boards for Point. Point can't keep it in, and the St. 
Michaels Majors will ice the puck as Sellers will stop it up for the faceoff. And again, it was a case of odd man situation. St. Mike's knows the key to victory is going to be outworking the 67s for those pucks. And they put three guys down their own corner to try and come up with it, which they did, but then they iced it to get themselves a line change. As you see the shot on Kotick as he kicks out the big rebound. And Kotick's been giving out some big rebounds. We're not used to seeing Seamus Kotick give such a large rebound. Join host Tess Van Staten each week in tech. Your source for high-tech news and information is every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. on Rogers Community TV. Tessier to take the draw against Sheldon Keith. Tessier wins it 67s with control. Gustafson. Gustafson fires towards the net. Doesn't make it to the net. Cation with it. Off the boards and into the crowd goes the puck and the 67s looking to sustain some pressure here in the second period, 15-53 to go. Well, Dan Tudor was probably one of the most uh, ecstatic players for that intermission buzzer to sound to start things off so you get a rest as he was logging an awful lot of ice time, penalty killing, as well as double shifting with Teste's line to match up against Keith's line, which they're still doing. Boynton right off the draw. Boynton, a flick shot towards the net. That's steered into the corner by Bateman. Tudin gives it to Tessier. Tessier behind the net, had Gustafson in the low slot. Tessier is hit hard against the boards. It's going to be a penalty, and Tudin. And it's going to be a scrap for sure. What a dirty play that was. Tessier with his back, it just got cross-checked in the lower back, and he is obviously hurt. Jeff Keach out there in a hurry to tend to Dan Tessier, and he looked like he buckled his knees as he was hit at the same moment. Well, that's what happens with Peter when you get the stick in the lower part of the back. He, the idea on the cross check is you can get away with it if you push down. Watch what he does. He's getting down, and he, he tries to push him down, but it's that three feet from the boards thing, right? That's a very dangerous area to be. And the penalty was called right away by Pat Smola. And you can just hear it. You see Dan Tudin stepping in to protect his center. As Tudin will get a penalty, I'm sure, for jumping in after the fact. And Tessier is still down. He hasn't moved. And you know, back injuries, Peter, are one of the most dangerous injuries any player can have. And I don't think, I don't think Hart's had any intention of hurting him. I think what he did is he tried to push down on the lower part of the back, but he also gave him a heck of a shot. And instead of pushing down, he cross-checked him down. And that's the difference. And you saw the way Dan Tessier hit. It's a timing thing. If he's if he's six inches closer to the board, that doesn't happen. We're going to take a look at it again here, Neil. As you see Jeff Keach talking to Dan Teste, and they want to make sure about this one. Take a close look, folks. It's right off to the right. Here it comes. See how he got him? He just he got the fist into the lower back, and it was just he gave the cross check in, and Teste got just drilled into the boards. And it's just, it's the way he got hit. It's just, the back just hyperextends itself, and you end up being bent over in an unnatural fashion, going backwards like that. And you just, you can strain just about every single muscle in there. I'm sure it's a muscle injury. It's not an impact injury. It's a stretch or a tear type situation. Ryan Barnes leads his team in penalty minutes coming into this game with 101 penalties, and there is what the, the clock has up. Five minutes for Barnes. And a couple up there for Dan Tudin. And there might be more than that. There might be a couple of minors assessed. Tudin might have two minors. And there might be a minor penalty to Barnes as well. I'm not really sure if Barnes has been sent from the uh, from the surface. So I think he's got a game as well. With 15 minutes left in this period, it, you, you can only be a game misconduct. 10 minute misconduct, he'd still be in here. So Pat Smola doesn't want any of that kind of play. And kudos to Pat Smola for that. But it's unfortunate for St. Mike's because Barnes is one of their better players. And a guy like that doesn't really need to do anything like this. So I'm kind of surprised. I think it was, again, it's just the timing and the position of it. I mean, I know the fans watching Toronto, they know Barnes. He's not a dirty player by nature. So I'm really surprised by that play. But Dan Teste has been on fire. And now with two players for Ottawa leaving the game, Lance Galbraith early, or about halfway through the first period, with an ejection, and that's there's Lance right there helping out. He's helping his buddy Dan Tessie into the dressing room. We'll get the penalties. 
A five minute major for checking from behind, five minutes for fighting, and a game misconduct. To the 67s, number 17, Dan Tudin, two minutes for instigating, five minutes for fighting, and a 10 minute misconduct. Time of the penalties, 424. Well, the fans here don't like the call, but you know what, Peter? I do. I think that's a good call to make. The, game, the 10 minute misconduct, I'm kind of surprised about, unless maybe it was something said by Tudin. But the instigator penalty, you can't, can't argue with that. I mean, he, he jumped all over Barnes when Barnes was looking down at Tessier. So instigator penalty, five minutes for fighting each, and the major for checking from behind with the stick in the lower back. Those are good calls, Peter. And more importantly, as the game goes on, Toronto just lost a third of what has been the best line here tonight in, in Barnes. But by the same token, you're making same, similar sacrifice as Dan Tessier is gone for the 67. So you're losing players of equal caliber at this point. And the way Dan was helped off the ice, it, I don't know if he'll be back in this game. I would consider it doubtful, but they do have a lot of time to work on it to get him ready for the third. He won't be back in the second. Talbot on the draw. He's out there with Sheldon Keefe. Luke Sellers with it. On the near side for Boynton. Boynton over the red line. Gives it to Zoltek. Zoltek slaps it in, giving chase. And there is Joe Talbot, the author of Ottawa's lone goal. Back to the blue line for Boynton. His wrist shot right on. A big rebound by Bateman. Loose puck. Boynton was looking for it. Play in the neutral zone for Sellers. Sellers. On the far side for Zoltek. Zoltek gives it to Talbot. Talbot gathering some speed. Trying to make the move on Kation. Kation bodies him off. Keefe is hit hard along the boards and Keefe is hurt. Zoltek, Zoltek's gonna go with Kation. And no surprise, Zoltek ran into Keefe, but you know what, that, that was pretty close to being the same sort of play as Matt Zoltek took it upon himself maybe to even up and go after Keefe, but I'd like, I mean, I'm sure we're going to see this again. But the bodies are flying. The guys are getting physical. These sort of things will happen. And Matt Zolta came a long way to get Keith. He came right from the hash marks in the slot to get Keith as Talbot had turned away from him. I don't think Keith expected anybody to be there. And when he looked up, it was Matt Zoltek. Big Matt Zoltek, the freight train. As he just jumped in and nailed Keith. And I didn't see Smola's arm go up, so I was kind of that. I really thought there was potential there for an immediate penalty call. As you take a look at it again, watch the top of your screen. Here comes Zoltik. He's got his head down. He looks up ice, and Zoltik just leans into him, shoulder. If He can't say checking from behind. Can't really say charging either. He's just gliding going in. Okay, maybe, maybe this is uh, a good check. It was just that three feet from the boards again, but this time on a clean hit. I didn't look, from this angle, it didn't look like it was clean. Hit. I thought he caught him from behind, but that replay shows it's kind of close. Keith well, was looking down. Howie Mooney is standing by. We're going to throw it downstairs to Howie for an update. Guys, the early word right now on Dan Tessier is that uh, he's got a sore lower back. He's recuperating right now in the dressing room, but uh, apparently he will be back later on in the game today. Thank you, Howie, and that's the fighting spirit of Dan Tessier, number three for the 67s. So there's going to be a few guys over there in the box now from each team. We'll, we'll take another look at Zoltek. Here, Peter, you, you take a look at this. What do you think? As Matt Zoltek comes in, what he's finishing the stride. He catches him. He catches him from behind, I think, Peter. He got it right in the numbers. He does, but it looks like Keefe saw him Turned coming, but, he, but he, he was already down a little bit, and his face was at about the level the dasher. Of, of the dasher board there where, where wood meets glass, and Keefe suffers. Uh, oh, it's the ankle or foot. Yeah. When he's being helped off like that, let, look, look, at the low, look at the fit position. We've been watching the upper body and the numbers. Look down at the feet, guys, and see on this next replay. Sorry, I'm going too fast for our guys. <laughs> Trying to take as many looks as we can at this play. It's, it's a tough one. Watch the feet of Keith. Oh, yes, he's got two feet wide apart, and then the skate gets folded over and down as Zoltek hit him. And that's why he's limping off. It looks like he's favoring his right leg as he's helped off the bench, or to, to the bench, rather. And then, of course, after all, Lacation came in and jumped Zoltek. And Zoltek knew what was going on as soon as it happened. The two of them dropped. So I don't think there could be an instigator penalty on this. 
Although Zoltek has a penalty. Let's take a listen. Number nine, Matt Zoltek. Four minutes for checking from behind and five minutes for fighting. And that's it for the penalties. Well, well, that can't be. There's more guys. Number 71, Sean Cation. Two minutes for instigating, five minutes for fighting, and a 10-minute misconduct. Time of the penalties, five yeah, that makes sense. A four minute for checking from behind. That was the three meter thing. Although Keith did turn into it. And then this to get a penalty for Cation. That pretty much, uh, pretty much close to exactly how it happened as you saw in the replay. So what it boils down to is Toronto's on a power play for another minute, nine seconds. And Karoop with it. Karoop out in front. And a loose puck is kicked away by the 67s. And Cannon retrieves. Cannon in his own end. Still with it over the red line. Gives it on the near side for Walsh. Walsh has the goal for Toronto. Cannon with it along the boards. Back at the point for Karoop. Back to Cannon. To Karoop. Looking for Walsh down low. 67's have it. Luke Sellers will get it down. And Dan Tudin returns to the ice in 30 seconds. That'll even things up for a little bit. Luke Sellers scrambling towards the bench. And the whistle stops Man, the play. 14.02 to go here in the second period. It's still 1-1. And that was very close to having too many men on the ice. If that puck had a, gone off the skate design, it would have been in big trouble. Potential too many men on the ice. But as a result, what was it? A two-line pass. As the bounce just went wide. So Gustafson now comes out with Poynton and Campbell. And look, folks, look at the ice service. We get a wide shot, I don't know if we can get it or not, but number three, Dan Tessier, has just arrived and got hit by Pat Smola. <laughs> Starting Monday morning, Ticketmaster will have a memorial. And the fans give a big cheer for Dan Tessier as he sits down at the end of the bench. I'm really surprised to see him back that quick. Pinizzotto sends it into Ottawa's corner, takes a slash. In there for Cannon. Cannon back at the blue line for Popovic to Cannon. Cannon turns around, gives it down low, a shot right on. Kotick hangs on to the rebound, a dribble to his left. Kotick that time not giving out the big rebound, but a little bigger than he anticipated, and he was able to bounce on it. As Smola is having a talk with uh, Boynton, I'm not really sure what that's about. Boynton and Smola having a little tete a tete in the corner. You see Kotick following that puck off to his left and then jumping on it, putting the big mid on her. Dan Tudin poised and ready to come onto the ice in nine seconds. Face-off gathered in by Cannon. Cannon being bothered by Zion. Back at the point, streaking in as Popovic, backhand shot, that goes wide. On the near side, Cannon with it. Cannon loses it in the corner to Campbell. Campbell ahead for Zion, Zion can't get it out. Pinizzotto keeps it in. Campbell backhand pass, Talbot on it. Dan Tudin is out, both teams playing. For a side up front, Pinizzotto turns around. He's picked off by Talbot, can't get it out. Intentional offside gonna be called as Boone had returned to the ice surface. As Boone hadn't had a whole lot of ice time, but when he was out there, he had to go sit a penalty for one of his colleagues. And that was a very lucky situation The St. Mike's couldn't capitalize on because Boone was way out of position. He had no idea where he was supposed to be on that PK. Comes over, puts the hit on. And there you see the intentional offside as Kotick picks it up. Boone was playing way off past his man. He's supposed to be covering the defense, and he was sitting about five feet from the boards, and his, his mark, his man, was up in the middle of the ice surface. McAllister on the draw. He wins it, turns around, takes a quick shot. That goes wide of Bateman. On the far side, Popovic ahead for Walsh. Walsh turns around, can't get it out. Zion sending it right back in. McAllister is on Walsh, and Walsh will get it into the neutral zone. Zenon Kanopka steps back onto the ice as he was serving Matt Zoltek's penalty. Zoltek still in there on the, on the misconduct penalty. Let's go, let's go! And the 67s now enjoy a power play for another two minutes and five seconds. Zion ahead for DeLille, off his stick, down the ice. And this could be icing, it is, as Heinz touches it up. 
Well, Peter, you know, one of the things that the new ownership, Jeff Hunt, brings to the table is the ability to market, and he's going to have his hands full as he wants to go after the Memorial Cup. Now, here's how it works. you got first-place teams and two wild cards. Right now, that's Ottawa, Barrie, Plymouth, and Guelph for the first-place teams. And then two wild card teams will get in. Right now, that would be Peterborough and St. Marie into the bid race. Now, whichever team puts together the, be the better bid will win the, uh, the Memorial Cup bid. And you see Belleville and Erie have an outside shot right now as they're on the outside looking in in a big sort of way. Ottawa, one of the favorites, as two years ago, they tried to get it. And Hull got it. And then the following year, they tried to get it. And, of course, you and I discussed off the air that it was already in the Hull region, so they couldn't get it. And Peterborough got it. So now you have to think they're one of the favorites. The Majors get it down but not out. Campbell stops it up. 67's on a power play. Campbell shot, deflected out in front, saved by Bateman. As he just put the trapper up and the puck hit him more than anything else. Caught it now. He'll leave it there for Campbell. A minute and a half to go on the man advantage for the 67's. Campbell, puck knocked off his stick. Still skating it in. Davis is there at the blue line. Zion. Zion on the far side for Campbell. Campbell looking to center it, but Cav intercepts a loose puck in front of the net. Campbell has it in the corner. Campbell steering it around. Still on it. Knocked off by Cannon. Cannon can't clear it. Zion. Zion on the far side. Hits Gustafson cross ice. Gustafson playing the point here on the power play, but the Majors still unable to get it out. Gustafson being bodied by Karuk. Davis down low in the corner for Dan Tessier. Back on the ice. Tessier being trouble. He's knocked down again. Zion with it. Zion, wrist shot right on. Save Bateman. Loose puck in front of the net. Davis working it in the corner. 40 seconds to go in the power play for Ottawa. Gustafson and Davis are there. Karuk coming in. Gets on a loose puck. Can't backhand it out. Campbell at the blue line to Zion. Zion winds up. Shot. Nowhere near the net as it dribbles in. And Dwayne Bateman hangs on and some more scuffling in front of him. Bateman made about three or four key saves as he's going to go out for a skate as I'm sure right now he is pumped, pumped, pumped up after some tremendous action in front of him. And boy, we finally got a chance to see Bateman in action. And he's made some very beautiful saves right now. Campbell with the nice low hard shot gets deflected, takes a weird bounce and good job by Bateman to stay with it and get that glove up there. He followed it all the way to the glove and you saw it was actually behind his head when he made the save. That one was going into the corner on the weird bounce and Bateman just somehow with the rapier-like hand got up there and made the catch. Boynton at the blue line, wrist shot behind the net. DeLille is with it. Gives it to Alfredson. Back at the blue line for Sellers. Sellers tees it up, shot pass, save Bateman. Loose puck in front of the net, rebound shot, they score! Miguel DeLille makes it 2-1 on the power play for Ottawa. Miguel DeLille not seeing much ice time, but making it count as he takes a nice low hard shot. But the real key is that the defense for St. Mike's are getting some unfortunate bounces. What happens is the puck's hitting them and it's not going their way. Alfredson's in front, watch the bounce here. Oh, that's, that's actually at the end of the play as DeLille just slides it underneath Bateman. And you see Miguel DeLille is a little surprised at things. See, look at the bounce, see what happened? Looked like, uh, I think it was Cameron Hines. Hines was trying to play it, and he just misplayed it with the stick, and it bounced back into the slot. And that allowed Ottawa with the extra man down in there, and DeLille just floated through, picked it up, and pushed it through Bateman. He didn't shoot it through, he pushed it through. And DeLille getting goal number seven on the season for the rookie. Tries to hit DeLille on the right wing. 67th player is down, it's Talbot, and the whistle will stop the play. With 10.29 to go here in the second period. And uh, that's this is all turning into one of those long periods, Neil. A lot of uh, a lot of stoppages in play with the scraps and the penalties in the first half of the second period. Well, it just shows that St. Mike's like to play that close style of game, Peter. We said it off the top of the show, is that St. Mike's is gonna keep it close, try and keep Ottawa contained. They've done a pretty good job up until now doing that as Talbot and Sellers pick up assists on DeLille's goal. At the blue line, Boucher shot, pad save, rebound. Walsh taking the shot on the rebound, that goes wide. 
And the 67s get it into the neutral zone. Talbot giving chase. Boucher backhands it back down to Ottawa's end. Van Hoof in the corner. The delayed offside is on as Ottawa looking to clear it out. Campbell ahead for Alfredson. He's checked off the puck. Ellis going after it in the corner. He banks it off the boards for Simpson. Simpson's hit hard by DeLille. DeLille getting involved here in the contest in the corner. Alfredson is there and Talbot looking for a loose puck. Simpson is there as well. And Talbot and Simpson. And that'll draw the iron. The two of them are pushing and shoving and taking the extra shots. That started all in the corner because Miguel DeLille came in and threw his body into the corner. As Talbot again is tied up with Simpson, as that's who Talbot really wanted to get at in the first place anyways. But Miguel DeLille, he's fired up, and Killer has sensed that as he put him back out again, as that line is making things happen. We got a very physical contest, but you know, we saw in the intermission, St. Mike's, this is their style of game. This is what they like. Ottawa's playing into their hands and allowing Ottawa, sorry, allowing Toronto to stay with Ottawa. They've been skating hard. Toronto has. They've been working hard into the corners, and they're throwing their body around, taking the extra shots after the whistle, and Ottawa's replying. And as a result, Ottawa's going to go down men again. DeLille throws his body into the corner. Good job. Takes down Simpson. Then there's another hit from Alfredson. Following the lead of DeLille, his line mate, goes in, hits Boucher. Boucher goes down. Alfredson goes down, and then Simpson takes exception to the hit he got. He says, well, there's a red shirt. I'll take the red shirt. Talbot's the one nearby, and he just gives him a shot. It looked pretty clean to me, just gave him a shot into the boards. Maybe got the stick up a little, or the fist up a little high, not too bad though. And then that caused guys to stick each other and tap and this, that, and the other thing. Yeah, one of the things we saw in the first period, Ottawa not winning too many face-offs as Toronto had to jump. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And even when Ottawa did get control of the face-off, it wasn't for very long, there was always a Toronto major, St. Mike's major, right on them. Yep. But the second period is a little bit different. Yeah, right now, it's uh, you have to think the way Ottawa's been going. Now, keep in mind, they, they've had the man advantage now for a little. They had it for about two and a half, almost three minutes at one point. What they've done is they've managed to outshoot Toronto. It's pretty even in the first period. I think it was an 8-7 or something in favor of St. Mike, so that's a wash. In the second period, it's been 7-5, so that's pretty much a wash. But the face-off speed, like you alluded to, has been the difference. Ottawa right now has won seven out of 11 face-offs, and that's the real key. And Dan Tessier really hasn't been the one, you know, that they, they usually, sorry, they usually look to Dan Tessier, but he was out for half of that. Yep. The medal is the same place, number nine, Brian Simpson, and number 10, Brian, uh, Chris Boucher. Two minutes each for roughing. And of the 67s, number 11, Henry Galfordson, and number 25, Joe Talbot. Two minutes each for roughing as well. Time of the penalties, 10-10. So some coincidental penalties being given to both teams here as the penalty boxes are uh, filling up and one more penalty for Ottawa and there won't be any room in there. Uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of room now. <laughs> I'd like to see either one of us try and fit into there right now. The, uh, even the scorekeeper is forced to stand now. Kenny Karoop and Tessier on the draw. 67's control Campbell on the left side for Van Hoof. Van Hoof sends it into the corner. Bateman stops it up behind the net, leaves it for Campbell. Kava throws it in the corner, Popovic giving chase, but the 67 is Justin Davis right there along the boards, and the whistle will bring about another face-off deep into Toronto's end. Well, you know, for most guys, you'd have to think that with that many guys sitting in the box for a lot of this game, guys like Dan Teste, Tudin, and Gustafson, not only do they have to go against Keith the whole time and chase a speedy guy like Keith all around the ice surface, but they also have to be out there to kill off penalties and extra man in the best. So you're shortening the bench considerably. Now Davis is forced to take up the left wing position on this line. Right off the draw, Toronto controls on the near side. It's Cannon. Cannon's checked off, but still hangs on to the puck. Gustafson turns around, sends it towards the net. Davis is there. Campbell at the blue line. Sends it into the corner for Gustafson. Kava trying to get it off of him. Davis tripped up behind the net. Popovic with it. Off the boards, looking for Keefe. Good to see Keefe back out there. Karoop with it at the red line. Skates into Ottawa's end. Karoop had three 67s around him. I don't know how he managed to escape from them without getting hit. Cannon. Backhand pass, looking for Keefe. That doesn't work. Tessier heading off on a line change. Puck comes right back to him as the puck is what to do. Always following the good players out there on the ice. Popovic ahead for Cannon. 
Cannon steers it for Keith. Keith stops up at the red line. Cross ice pass. Working it in there for Boucher. Campbell is on him. Brian Campbell. Backhand pass into the neutral zone, looking for Kanopka. Kanopka is checked off, but the puck is in the corner. Boucher with it. Brock Boucher on the right side. And the Majors shoot it in. John Schmidt loses it. Boucher in the corner. McQueen checks him. Sticks high. Let's go! And the 67s work it into the corner for Kanopka. McLean with it. 7.55 to go here in the second period. It's 2 to 1 Ottawa. DeLille steers it into the neutral zone. McAllister trying the stick work. DeLille backs him up over Toronto's line. Miguel DeLille into the corner. He's there with Rasmussen. Play along the boards, and Toronto gets it out into the neutral zone. Zion will give it to McLean. McLean crosses the red line, sends it in. Gustafson giving chase to Bateman. Stops it there for Hines. Hines sends it on the left side, not out. Quick shot, right back in, rebound! Tessier behind the net, looking for the wraparound. Dan Tessier looking for the loose puck now. As his shot is stopped by Dwayne Bateman. And the Majors get it down the ice, and as soon as McLean touches it, the icing will stop the play. Dan Tessier went off earlier on the previous shift as a result of Ben Gustafson, who's shadowing Keith. He took a shot, Gustafson lined up, Keith missed, and caught Tessier, and he went off. That back is not 100%. We take a look at the opportunity by Tessier. Davis again is the one trying to get it through the middle. Tessier tries to suck Bateman and Bateman follows him all the way though and then puts the paddle down and does a good job of stuffing that five hole opportunity. So Dan Tessier lines up with Kenny Karoop. To the left of Dwayne Bateman. Karoop is given the heave ho by Chris Kitt. And in comes Sheldon Keith. Come on, Ottawa, let's get into this one. 67 to win the draw, but Toronto controls Cannon. Ahead for Karoop, that goes by him. And Sellers looking at the transition, but his pass goes astray into the corner now. Tessier, Tessier at the scene of the crime, where he was sent off on an earlier hit. Gustafson in there as well, and so is Heinrich Alfredson behind the net, centering it, Gustafson on a great pass by Tessier, couldn't pull the trigger. Keefe with it, over the red line, takes a shot right on, big rebound for Boynton. Boynton gives it to Tessier, to Gustafson, looking for Alfredson at center. Karoop with it now for Toronto, Karoop. Shooting it in, Boynton is there, and Talbot deflects the puck into the crowd. Well, one thing the big hits that are being thrown by St. Mike's Major are finally having an impact on is that the timing on which the 6-7s are throwing the puck. What they're doing is, as soon as 6-7 gets the puck now, they're looking to get rid of it right away. They're looking for the next pass because they're afraid of getting hit. And Dad Tessier, just to make sure there's no doubts in his mind, he goes down, hits a couple of guys right away, and then makes the pass out. As we just saw Henrik Alfredson talking to Bateman. Well, actually, sorry, you didn't see it. The viewer, we saw it. And I'm kind of curious about that, why Bateman and Alfredson were having a little chat behind the play. On the draw, puck on the near side. Caught up in some skates. Dustin Davis is there, along with Ryan Walsh, and Talbot comes away with it. Van Hoof to Campbell, back to Van Hoof. Brian Campbell turning around in his own in his own. Off the boards for Justin Davis. Davis hits Tudin. Make that Ms. McAllister who jumps it in. Playing the corner now for Davis. Davis looking for Talbot behind the net. Walsh is with it. Walsh tries to backhand it around the boards. That doesn't go anywhere. Talbot loses it to Walsh. Walsh working his way through the neutral zone. Spotted Ellis, but decided to take the shot. Behind the net, Ellis looking to center it. Rasmussen is with it. In the corner now, Ellis back to Simpson. Shot deflected high and over the glass. Howie Mooney is standing by. Let's send it downstairs, Howie. All right, guys, coming up in the second intermission, we've got a story on the third jersey. The 67 is wearing it tonight, and it looks very, very sharp. We've also got an interview, uh, I'll have an interview with Mark Osborne, the assistant coach of Toronto St. Mike's. Guys? Thank you, Howie. 5.35 to go here in the second period. It's 2-1 to one, Ottawa. 
as we take a look at the deflection on the shot as Ottawa got cut running around a little bit. St. Mike's getting some pressure going here late in this second period. And Ottawa has definitely picked up their game in this period as we take a look at... I'm not really sure what that is. <laughs> I think they're missing one of the guys. I don't think he was standing up. And they should be happy they're not in a football Let's game go. outside. <laughs> Well, it has been rather balmy for this time of year. Oh, we got another tilt going on. As McLean taking exception to Mulder. As McLean and Mulder. Mulder hasn't been out there a whole lot. I haven't heard his name at all. McLean had some ice time, but not much. This gives us an opportunity, Peter, to just point out the sort of difference between periods. As, as you said earlier, St. Mike's was really dominating in the early part of the first period. Ottawa now dominating both face-offs and the shot clock. 10-5 face-offs and 10-6 on shots. And Ottawa seems to be stepping it up that extra level that is sort of synonymous with higher ranked teams. They have that extra gear they can go to. They get riled up over something. And you know what? If we trace this all the way back, it all started with one physical play of Lance Galbraith. And at the time, it looked like a really bad play. <laughs> it still probably is in some people's books. Well, we said it was going to have an effect on the game one we way did. or another. We did, you're right. And you were talking about that extra gear that Ottawa has. You know what that's called? That's called line number three and line number four. <laughs> that's right. Third gear and fourth gear, not necessarily meaning uh, higher speeds, just extra gears. Yeah, the luxury that Brian Kilray has that he can rely on his third and fourth unit, although he did have to, he does have to shake up the line, especially since Lance Galbraith had to exit the game early on. And that Tootin is still uh, sitting in the box as he had a 10-minute misconduct. So as we... Nice difference this year, Peter, is that right there. Is that there's not a whole lot of empty seats anymore. And that's really been a difference of the marketing and the push that Jeff Hunt has put on for this hot club. Things like the third jerseys that they're wearing tonight. I mean, these are sharp-looking jerseys. And I didn't give credit the last week we were talking about, but Acart Graphics, a local company, is the company that actually designed these. And when they came, a couple of teams were competing for the, third, the rights for the third jersey. One of the things that happened was that uh, Acart came. Jeff Hunt had a specific concept in mind, and he said Acart was the closest to it. And you know what? Watch off to the top of your screen, folks, because Zoltek and Keith are chatting it up a bit as if one of them wants to dance. Not sure which one. The rookie and the veteran. 67s dump it in and around the boards. Cannon is on Gustafson. Gustafson sends it into the other corner. On the near side now, Cannon with it. Cannon looking to the neutral zone. Tessier is there. Zion with it to Nick Boynton. Boynton makes the move on Cannon. Boynton over the red line into Toronto's end. Play in the corner now. Tessier is there first. Tessier behind the net for Gustafson. Gustafson still on it. Looking point. Turns around. Heads to the corner. Behind the net for Tessier. Tessier centering it to Zoltek. Shot right on. Save. Loose puck looking for it is Dan Tessier, and the whistle stops the play with a face-off coming at 4.43 to go here in the second period. Matt Zoltek thought he scored. Zoltek and Keith are still trash-talking. And this is interesting. I wonder what's going on between those two. Obviously chatting it up. You know, that'd be a good play for the experienced Zoltek to get Keith off the ice surface. As we still got some pushing and shoving going on. As now things clear as the lines are being changed. And boy, both teams changing big lines. You know what? One of the reasons Dan Teste comes back, the thing he adds, is his ability to win the faceoff. And according to our official stats guy, Paul Hicks, who's joined us on the crew, we welcome him to the team, is that Teste has won 13 out of 16 faceoffs. That's just an incredible number. Talbot on the draw this time with Ryan Walsh. Toronto control. Simpson with it. Gets it out of the zone, through the center zone, dumping it in behind Cotting. Sellers is there. He'll wrap it around the boards for Justin Davis ahead for Talbot. Talbot almost collides with Henrik Alfredson. Alfredson turns around and wheels it into Toronto's end. Talbot giving chase down. Davis on the loose puck. Davis makes a move on his man out in front. They score! Henrik Alfredson on a great feed by Justin Davis. It's 3-1 to one on a wall. Justin Davis is making his mark here with the extra ice time being afforded to his line, to him in particular. As we've seen him on Teste's line, we've seen him on Talbot's line, we've seen him on all kinds of lines as he is out there making things happen. Alfredson got fired up and DeLille did some good work in the corner. And this is paying off. This is the combinations as 
it's not just one particular set of guys that's clicking, it's when everybody comes together. And Alfredson doing his trademark jump into the glass, can't get into the bleachers here. And it was just because St. Mike's right now is being outworked for the loose puck and Bateman was left all alone. Can't blame him for that one. Can't blame him for any of them. 4.20 to go here in the second period. Now 3-1 to one, Ottawa. Rasmussen trying to bank it off the boards and out he does. Karut now looks to Keefe. But that's intercepted by Campbell. Toronto keeping it in. Brian Campbell stops up behind his own net. Let's the play develop in front of him and decides to lug it out as far as Talbot. Talbot to Alfredson on the left side giving chase. Bateman, Bateman hangs on to the loose puck as Alfredson was barreling in on him. And I don't want to leave anything out. Joe Talbot, I didn't mention him on that last bit of praise for the Auto 67s. Honorick Alfredson's the goal scorer, but Talbot and Davis pick up assists. That's Talbot's third point as he has been in on all three Ottawa goals. He scored the first one to get them going, and then he got two assists now as he has so far been the, the playmaker for the Ottawa 67s and not necessarily the guy they normally look to. Henrik Alfredson, Ottawa's rookie points leader. DeLille in the corner, turns around, tries to find someone at the point. Boynton was there. That play is picked off by Simpson in the neutral zone. Walsh off the boards. Boynton gathers that in. Can't get any farther than the red line. Simpson backhands it into Ottawa's end. John Zion is there. 3.30 to go here in the second period. Zion in his own corner off the boards for McAllister. McAllister taps it for Boynton. Boynton fires it in. And this will be icing as Popovic takes a slash as soon as he touches the puck, Neil. Yeah. You know, that time was just a timing play between Boynton and Kanopka. As Kanopka, the rookie, not reading the play, Nick Boynton looking for the pass through the middle. Kanopka wasn't even looking for it, I don't think. As we'll take a look at the slash, here's the icing coming up. And there's the slash by McAllister as he comes over with a vicious two-hander. Really surprised he didn't get called for that. On the replay, it showed just the malicious nature of that slash. Kanopka on the draw, 67's control. Boynton can't get it out. Popovic keeps it in. Only for a moment as Kava retraces his steps in his own end. Popovic with it. Around his net minder and back. He's bodied off by Kanopka. The loose puck, Kava has. Kava on the right side. Giving chase is John Zion around his goaltender, backhands it off the glass. At the blue line, Cava keeps it in for a second. DeLille on it now into the neutral zone. Sticks are flying here. McAllister, McAllister trying to make the move on Popovic. We're going to get a penalty here against Toronto as Pat Smola's arm is up high. Well, he didn't have any trouble making that call. Miguel DeLille tried to put the move on the St. Mike defender. And I believe that was Cava. And Cava just had no choice but to haul his man down. As you see here, Cava realized he's flat-footed off the boards from the checking of Kanapka. He's forced just to pitch for it. DeLille, and down he goes. As the, now the penalty box on the St. Mike's side is filling up a little more. So the faceoff will come to the right of Dwayne Bateman. Ottawa enjoying a 3-1 lead here, 2.35 to go in the second period. Peter Tromley along with Neil Turcotte and Howie Mooney downstairs. This is OHL primetime. Campbell gives it to Boynton at the point. Back to Campbell, takes a shot right on. Bateman with the save, a loose puck is tapped back to him by Hines, and he hangs on. As you see, the big man Matt Zoltek now is the one heading into the front of the net as Tessier, Zoltek, and Gustafson are the pairing on this power play. Pairing, sorry, <laughs> the line. Pretty tough to take a pair out of three guys. Boynton and Campbell, the veterans on the point. The two guys leading the team in assists. And the league for defense, and they're up there in the top ten, both of them. Tessier takes the draw against Karuk. Karuk bats it down the ice, killing off some time here on the penalty kill. Boynton. Boynton in his own corner, taps it ahead. Campbell with it. Campbell gathering some speed. 
Over Toronto's line, leaves it for Gustafson, takes a spill. Gustafson, out in front, Zoltek back in, he scores! Oh, what a move! Matt Zoltek faked everybody out of their shorts. Peter and I are looking for ours up here as Zoltek goes to the back end. Nobody expected that, especially, and more importantly, Bateman. Good golly, Miss Folly, did you catch the train going by? Great setup, and Zoltek just realizing he's in a bad position, goes to the backhand, Bateman out of position for a backhand shot. As Campbell sacrificed, got Submarine on a beautiful low hit, coming across the middle, but he gave up the puck in time to make the play effectively before being taken off his feet. Dwayne Bateman completely baffled by the move, Matt Zoltek, and it wasn't even so much of a move, it was just a smart play. Power play goal for Ottawa makes it four to one. And Toronto, it's Walsh. Walsh is hit hard along the boards. Simpson takes a shot steered wide by Kotick. The return shot hits the side of the net. Play on the far side, Zoltek is there. Popovic at the blue line, keeps it in. And just as quickly, Ottawa gets it right back out. Popovic gives it to Boucher. Boucher flips it. And Davis, with his reach, keeps it in, but just for a second. Luke Sellers. Looking on the right side for Davis. Boucher with it now in his own end. Boucher firing it to center for Walsh. 67s, send it right back to center. DeLille, make that Talbot to Davis. Davis working it in, down low. Davis looking for the backhand, turn around. As the loose puck came right back to him. Justin Davis applying some pressure, and the Majors get it down. Luke Sellers touches it up for the icing under a minute to go here in the second period. Matt Zoltek also throwing the body around after he gets the goal, and that's his second point of the night as he got an assist on the first goal as well. Matt Zoltek trying to get more involved in this game as Davis does a good job of setting it up like he's gonna pass. Goes in tight, takes the first shot, they come through traffic, tries to spin around. And on the spin around, he can't get the stick on it. Boucher does a good job of showing patience, picking up the puck and trying to fire it out. And then it goes down the ice for an icing. But Boucher was the only guy there that could have stopped that play as Bateman was completely out of it. Karup will take the draw against Dan Tessier. Tessier is taking every draw in the offensive zone so far. Back at the blue line, Zion shot block in front. Puck lying there. Pinizzotto in the corner. He's hit along the boards, a loose puck comes out to Boucher. And that's picked off by Gustafson. Alfredson looking to center it, Cav is on him. Karup backhands it on the near side. Boucher sends it to center, John Zion is there. He gives it to Point. Point looks up at the clock. 30 seconds to go here in the second period. And another whistle brings about the faceoff. Don't forget to tune in to OHL This Week. Find out more about teams across the province and how they prepared for this season and learn more about the new teams and new jerseys like those of the Ottawa 67s. You can catch that and more Thursdays, 8.30 on Rogers Community TV. Well, like you said, Neil Dantesi out there to take the draw again. Up along the boards. Simpson is there along with Walsh. In the neutral zone, Tessier zig, the puck zag. Rasmussen, can't get it by Gustafson. Point on the left side for Tessier. Tessier trying to make the move on Cava. Back in the blue line for Point. Point shot. And that hit Alfredson, sort of stung him a little bit. Cava on the transition into the neutral zone. Can't backhand it in. And that'll pretty much do it here in the second period as the clock winds down. And Neil, a long one, comes to an end here. Oh, is it ever? There's a lot of stoppages and a lot of stuff going on. Physical play. And as a result, when St. Mike's looked like they're doubting physical play, Otto gets a couple. It started, though, with a power play goal, and the specialty team is really what got it going for Ottawa, and that's what led to their three-goal cushion they have right now. 4-1 is your score. We've got our second intermission coming up. You're watching OHL Prime Time.
cellular communication for this production is provided by Cantel AT&T. Cantel AT&T, a proud sponsor of Community Television. Welcome back to the Ottawa Civic Centre, folks. The 67's leading after 40 minutes by a score of 4-1 to one over the Toronto St. Mike's Majors. You see the uh, 67's tonight, they are wearing their third jerseys. They unveiled the jersey to wild acclaim last week against the Sarnia Sting. And tonight we're going to take a look, a closer look, at the 67's newest addition. And now, you're the very first people on this planet to see this. Please welcome the brand new... For months, the 67s have been promoting that something was coming. On November 20th, Ottawa unveiled this new third jersey. Almost 7,000 fans came out to see what the deal was, and if the size and sound of the crowd were any indication, the new jersey is a hit. I kind of like it. It's got a lot of youth appeal. I think the kids are going to really like it. Yeah, it's pretty good. It looks the best on number three. Yeah. I think it's really great. I think it's really clever to have the puck on it like that. That's a good idea. The night had been hyped for quite a while, and there was a party-type atmosphere at the Civic Center with the New Jersey's and boy band VIP singing the national anthem and putting on a free concert after the game. Since taking over the team, one of Jeff Hunt's top priorities was to bring a new, youthful look to the 67s. Well, really, since the time I took over the club, um, you know, one of the things I wanted to do was bring in kind of a new image uh, uh, around the club, a new icon. Uh, if you want and uh, you know there's a lot of tradition in the barber poles jersey and didn't want to break from that but uh, on the other hand the youth in this community and it was proved in focus groups don't necessarily relate totally to the barber poles finding the right logo wasn't easy and it took some refining before the final product was unveiled well we worked with an agency ACART uh, here in Ottawa and uh, you know I think they've got a probably a team of about five or six people that worked on it and they came up with versions of the logo first. And, uh, you know, then we had uh, some minor changes to that. And then we uh, had to come up with a jersey that could be worn uh, in conjunction with the new logo. And uh, then we took it to focus groups and we refined it and changed it and refined it and changed it. And finally, we've come up with what you see today. Louis LaForest was a member of the team at ACART that came up with the new logo. And he says it might look like Peter Puck, but they didn't have that in mind when they were designing the new 67's logo. It's kind of funny that you mentioned that because we figured people would mention that, but no, not at all, actually. Uh, the idea of the puck is that uh, we just, you know, it's a 67, so what do you come up with for a new image? And uh, the idea was just basically we didn't see anybody else using that as an icon, and it's the most basic icon of, of hockey. So, uh, you know, came up with the idea and had our illustrator draw up the logo and the character and, uh, you know, kind of give him some edge and uh, give him some bite. Along with the new jersey, the 67's brought out a whole line of new products. Oh, we got everything from uh, probably five or six new uh, hats to fleeces, golf shirts, t-shirts, um, track suits, um, you know, you name it, we've got it tonight. Uh, and of course, jerseys. The new logo and jersey were kept top secret right up until game time. But a couple of 67's got a sneak peek for a photo shoot the morning of the unveiling. Boynton and Campbell are amongst those players. One kept it a secret, one let it slip out, but both love the excitement that it brings to the team. You know, I like to keep the guys, and you know, a little. They were a little upset when I wouldn't tell them, and I like that to you know, bug them a little bit. So it wasn't wasn't too hard. I have to say, I told a few people about it, but uh, that's about it. Uh, it wasn't too too bad. The uh, none of the teammates were asking too much. So uh, it's a it's a great jersey, and it's a great idea for the team, and uh, the support tonight showed off. New owner Jeff Hunt hasn't hid the fact that he wants the 67s to get noticed this year. So far, he's been giving the fans what they want, with the retiring of Doug Wilson's jersey bringing the older fans back, and this new third jersey getting the kids excited about 67's hockey. And with the way the 67s are playing on the ice, fans have plenty to get excited about. For OHL Primetime, I'm Zach Martin. All right, thanks, Zach. We'll be back with more of OHL Primetime, folks, right after these words. So do not go away. We'll be back.
Four on the score after 40 minutes. We're pleased now to be joined in studio by Mark Osborne, the assistant coach of the Toronto St. Mike's Majors. And uh, Mark, uh, how have you seen the game so far tonight? Well, obviously, it's been a, uh, a grinding type of game. I mean, uh, you know, we came into a building where these guys, are, I believe, won nine in a row. And, and uh, any time you come into this building, it's a tough place to play. But, uh, you know, we held our own, and they've got a couple of power play goals, and that's uh, basically the difference. How has it been for you so far? You've been with the team about a month, uh, and uh, we, I sort of cracked at the, the break that, you know, that was when the team started playing well. But how has it been so far for you? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been very interesting getting back into the junior game. I mean, I was obviously in the NHL and pro hockey for the last uh, 16, 17 years. And, uh, you know, it's been a while since I've seen junior hockey, and it's been a, obviously a learning experience, but the game of hockey doesn't change. It's, uh, um, you know, teaching kids coming out of whether they played midget or, or Bantam or, or Tier 2, and uh, it's a new challenge, and I'm, uh, I'm enjoying working with the kids. Has it been fun to get back to Maple Leaf Gardens and, uh, and hang around there? Uh, um, it's, I don't know if fun is the word. It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed many good years there. Yeah. and. And, uh, you know, that building's coming to a close this year from the NHL standpoint. So, uh, you know, it's fun to be back home in the Toronto. And, uh, you know, we play out at the gardens and uh, had a lot of fond memories. And it's a nice place to play. Tell us what kind of a team you've got. I mean, obviously, we're seeing a very physical game here tonight. You had a physical game last week against Kingston. And uh, then, of course, the game against the Sioux. Uh, is it always like this with St. Mike's? Well, it isn't always like this. I mean, we've got uh, some talent and some skill up front now than, than we had last year. Um, I think teams are maybe saying, you know, you don't have a game with St. Mike's, and I think we're, we're proving that otherwise. I think some teams take advantage of some of our skilled players, and, you know, as I've seen in junior hockey, uh, you know, things can kind of get, get out of hand, and uh, we've been involved in numerous altercations, but we're not the only team, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a game. Uh, unfortunately, things happen out there, and you've got to stick up for each other. St. Mike's has a long tradition. Uh, you know, there have been many great hockey players who've yeah. come through St. Mike's. Uh, what's it like? Is, is, is that education and everything in the tradition all woven together for these oh, guys? No doubt it's all woven together. I mean, it, I think St. Mike's stands apart from uh, any junior program in Canada from what they're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. as far as the academics and making the student of uh of the game you know they're trying to build the guy as far as not just laying the guys eggs in one basket per se i mean uh when you put academics the kid is going to have something whether he goes on in hockey or not and uh Anytime you do that, uh, a program like St. Mike stands above the rest. Sheldon Keefe is obviously the leading scorer on the team. Who are the other leaders on this team, uh, sort of in the dressing room and out of the dressing room as well? Well, we got uh, Ryan Barnes is a great leader. Uh, we've got Mike Jefferson, who is our captain, who's not playing tonight. Uh, we've got numerous leaders, but you know those are the guys that step up front and come in and play night in and night out. And uh, you know it's a pleasure working with kids like that. You're coaching now, you're back into assistant coaching with Junior. Do you want to get into that, uh, I guess, as a full-time job, uh, maybe get into the NHL as well? Yeah, it's a possibility. I, I, I'm enjoying what I'm doing now. I, uh, we made it a priority as a family to come back to Toronto for various reasons, and uh, this opportunity came along, and, uh, you know, we're taking it a year as it comes, and I enjoy hockey and like to stay in it as much as long as I can. Mark, thanks for doing this. Good luck to you and to the uh, St. Mike's Majors the rest of the way. Thanks very much. All right, we'll be back with more of OHL Primetime, folks, right after these words, so stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. 4-1 is the score after two periods, and uh, Neil and I were talking about it during the intermission. This has turned into a physical game. Yeah, at first it looked like a skating game as uh, Toronto St. Mike's was really doing a good job out hustling and out skating the 67s, which is surprising to us. But then when you look at the guys, we haven't seen St. Mike's that often, and guys like Keith are doing a great job of forechecking. That kind of disappeared as uh, the main guys on both sides were uh, getting knocked around a bit. Yeah, a couple of guys who can attest to the physical play out there, Dan Tessier and Sheldon Keith going out early but coming back later on in the second period. Let's take a look at the scoring summary from that second period. As you see, DeLille got things going on the power play with a setup from Talbot and Sellers, and that really was key to the way the momentum shifted into Ottawa's favor. And then Alfredson from Davis and Talbot, and Alfredson got fired up as Talbot collected his third straight point. And then Zoltek on the absolutely splendid move set up by Gustafson and a great rush and sacrifice by Campbell also on the power play. And this is the one we're talking about. This is how it all got started in that period. Sellers winds it up, takes the shot, rebound, 
Comes out, Upson steps up, tries to get the screen on the side of the net. DeLille just forces it through as he was the lucky recipient of that loose puck. And he was just as surprised as anybody to pick that one up and push it through for the power play goal. And that's when Ottawa really started to pick it up. Even though St. Mike's was putting out the physical pressure on Ottawa, they just seemed to have that jump that we're used to seeing from the 67s. Little more speed, little more energy going after the puck. And it results in the first goal of the period. And they were able to get two more after that. Capping it off that period with Zoltex just great back end. And just about ready to get underway here in the third period. And uh, the secret formula, well, no secret anymore for Ottawa. The teams that seem to be staying with them for a couple of periods, Ottawa always, more often than not, 20 victories to attest for. They just slowly get away from their opposition with a couple of late goals as a whistle comes to stop the play. Here. And right off the bat, Keith and Alfredson were tied up together, and Keith gave Alfredson a shot, and he took exception to it. And boy, Alfredson did a great job there of drawing a penalty. I thought Alfredson could have got one in return, but Smola didn't see it. And boy, you can't can't like the fact that Keith is sitting. Now Toronto has to kill a four-minute spearing penalty. I'm pretty sure that spearing is going to be the call. Sure, it looked like the signal I saw. Tessier takes the draw and wins it against Karuk. Luke Sellers behind Seamus Kotick. On the right wing, now quickly on the near side for Dan Tessier. Tessier over the red line, dumps it in. Gustafson, there first, sends it on the near side for Alfredson. Quickly back to Tessier. Tessier works it back to Sellers at the blue line. Sellers, flip shot right in. Cava gets it to Walsh, and Walsh sends it into the neutral zone. 67's on the transition. Alfredson backhands it in. Bateman leaves it there for Cava. Cava can't get it out as Tessier has it in the corner. Tessier works it through the face-off circle on the near side for Sellers. Sellers at the blue line, spots Tessier's shot. That goes wide as Tessier was streaking in Johnny on the spot. Sellers to Alfredson. Alfredson wrist shot saved by Bateman. Alfredson on the rebound. Back to Point. Point looks up, shot right on. And that's steered in the corner by Bateman. Walsh gathers in the loose puck and sends it down the ice. Oh, well, we've seen that play before many times, Peter, and that is the streaking give and go across ice on the power play. Tessie using be, usually being the trigger man. That time he just missed the net. Campbell with it over the red line. He shoots it in. The puck comes around the boards. Zoltek checks his man off. That was Rasmussen who went flying. In the neutral zone, Zion. Cross ice for Campbell. Campbell backpedaling feats. Zoltek on the left wing. Zoltek ahead for Talbot. In the neutral zone, it's Cannon with it. Cannon over the red line. Killing off some time here. 2.15 to go. On the power play for Ottawa. Campbell and Zion quarterbacking the power play. Campbell with it over Toronto's line. Campbell working it in out in front. Batting out of midair. Loose puck in front for Zion. Shot right on save. Bateman rebound is cleared away. Campbell at the blue line. Feeds it for Talbot in the corner. And the St. Michael's Majors get it down the ice. A minute 50 to go here on the power play for Ottawa. Connick stops it up for John Zion. Zion working his way through the neutral zone. Takes a hack. McAllister with it. Spins around and sends it into the corner. Kanopka's hit. Zion with the puck along the boards. Zion and Cannon are there. And the Majors don't get it out. DeLille across for Campbell. Campbell working his way across the blue line. Works it up and in. Shot over Bateman. Zion at the blue line. Feeds DeLille in the high slot. DeLille shot scores! Miguel DeLille on the power play makes it 5-1 to one, Ottawa. And the third period starts very similar to the second is DeLil again on the power play. Gets the goal. And it's just great puck control at the blue line to keep it in. And a little give it go. And I'm surprised the one-timer wasn't there as Campbell tried to pick that corner earlier on a goal scorer goal or goal attempt. But it was actually DeLil who found the mark on the shoulder. You see Bateman looked like he was expecting it to go left side. 
as he kind of almost flinched the left side first and then realized his right side and it was up and over his shoulder and in. Rasmussen looking ahead for Ellis, but Walsh has it now. Walsh and Ottawa's in, looking for someone in front. Simpson backhands it off the boards. Walsh is there on it right now. Walsh looking to center it, backhand shot by Simpson, and Seamus Connick will hang on for the faceoff. As that's four unanswered goals, five unanswered goals now by the 67s. As we take a look at St. Mike's. And St. Mike's getting a lucky bounce off the skate of the 67 defender. And it bounces towards Kotick. Kotick decides to reel that one in instead of letting it go like he did the previous time. The 6 7's jockey for the lineup, trying to set their positions. Tessier takes the skate, make sure everybody's ready. Tessier and Karoop lining up as they have been for most of the night. Van Hoof behind his net. Gives it to Tessier. Tessier in the neutral zone, drops it for Tudin. Tudin with some speed over Toronto's line. Tudin is down. Hines was on him, looking to center it is Tessier. Backhand shot by Gustafson. Bateman makes the save there. 67 is keeping it in. It's Van Hoof. And sorry, Peter. Keith takes an undisciplined penalty as he's getting frustrated. He knows he's supposed to be out there dominating, or feels like he is. And he's getting a little frustrated as Tudin on his first shift back after sitting pretty much two or a period and a half. See Keith puts it up and then sees him coming and puts the stick up as Tudin was looking to drive a small standing right behind him. Keith's going back into the sin bins. He just got out for a four minute spear. Now he's going back in again. And you gotta think the coaching crew of Toronto St. Michael's Majors are not terribly happy at that sort of maneuver. Well, Sheldon Keith, who leads all rookies with 19 goals and leads his team in goal scoring is also minus 16 coming into this contest for Toronto and now puts his team down again, Gustafson. Gustafson at the red line, turns it around and heads back up ice on the left side. Gustafson backhands it behind the net. Tessier on the far side. Tessier is bothered by Hines. Karup is in there as well. Boynton with it. Boynton to Sellers. Sellers shooting it right on save by Bateman. Loose puck gathered in by Tessier. Tessier in the corner. Still circling with it on the near side for Sellers. Sellers back to Boynton. Boynton tees it up. Shot right on the score! Deflected in front of Bateman. No chance for Bateman. He never saw it. Never saw it at all, Peter. He was down in the butterfly. He had both appendages extended, just hoping that it would hit him. And Nick White let the screenshot go. And we'll take another look at it. And again, Keith is really the one to blame. And it, it might have gone off of Mark Hines, number two for St. Mike's. Ben Gustafson was in front of the net as well. Oh, went off of Gustafson's hip, right off his hip. And into the net, and Keith, although he doesn't get a minus for that play, he is the reason there is a, another goal up the boards. And St. Mike's making a change as Bateman's going to be pulled in favor of Jeff Thompson. Not Bateman's fault, but Toronto St. Mike's coaching staff realizing that enough is enough for Bateman and no point in leaving this guy in anymore as he needs something to regroup the troops. So rather than waste the time out, he'll make a goaltending change. They get a bit of a warm up. We'll take another look at it. Now watch right in front of the net. This is the... Nick Boynton just takes the low shot. It deflects, looks like twice. And you see there, boom, oh, great shot, guys. As you see, it goes off Gustafson's hip and inside the post. And Bateman just turns and watches it go in as he didn't see it till the last second. Jeff Thompson, Jeff Thompson comes in and Dwayne Bateman comes out. The only thing that was going to save Dwayne Bateman is Bill Gates and the best screensaver out there. <laughs> as they warm up, Jeff Thompson. Yeah, but he's in legal problems too, so. Who knows where that one's gonna go. Anyways, take a look. There's a bit of a warm up going on here in the Kind of wondering what they're gonna do right now with Keith. Keith's gotta learn, he is a rookie, but he's also a captain, so this is the learning experience he's gonna have to go through. He's gotta learn there's a time 
There's a time to rough it up with somebody, and there's a time to take a hit for the team. And that time was not the time to retaliate. The small was right behind him. It's just an awareness thing. It's a learning experience. Let's take a look at 67's bench. And Justin Davis seeing some action. A few fans taking in the game tonight from Toronto. The Majors are back at home against Barry. That coming tomorrow and against the Ice Dogs on Sunday afternoon. And just as you mentioned, there's the games this Sunday. Mississauga and Toronto, you see that live at 1.30. And for those viewers in the Ottawa area, Owen Sound will be visiting the Ottawa Civic Center in the 67s at 2 p.m. John Zion can't clear it out. Ryan Walsh taps it ahead for Ellis. Ellis is stripped. Van Hoof in the corner with it. Along the boards for Zoltek. Zoltek gets it out. Popovic sends it right back in. Jonathan Zion to Zoltek on the left wing. Zoltek with one of the prettiest goals tonight. Still at the red line. Flips it. Into Toronto's end. Cava behind Thompson around the boards for Ellis. Ellis is hit. Zoltek had him lined up. Walsh to Popovic. Popovic over Ottawa's line takes a flip shot. That's behind Seamus Cotting. Looking to center it was Popovic. 67's control. It's Talbot. Talbot loses control. He's checked by Simpson. Ellis with it. Ellis through the neutral zone. Shoots it right on. Seamus Cotting steers that into the corner. Zion's there. 14.41 to go here in the third period. It's 6-1 to one, Ottawa. Rasmussen trying to turn it around. Talbot is all over him. Karoop now giving chase. Boone is on him. Karoop gives the fist to Boone, giving him the business. Guff is there. 67s. It's Boone on the transition. Trying to shoot it in a little bit too high as the puck works its way into the crowd. And one of the fans down in the front row, uh, one of the young kids down there, young boy didn't really keep his eye on the game as he was standing up. I don't know what he's looking at, but it kind of bounced off his his head there a little. Uh, I'm sure he'll be all right. I hope he is as they're checking him out. That's the thing about sitting down low. you got to keep your eye on it, especially with the short glass right at the end of the bench. There's no partition glass. You see that in a lot of rinks now. What they do is they put a partition glass across at the end of the bench to stop things like this from happening. As I'm sure he'll tough it out. He's a hockey player. That's why he's here. And Don Cherry would be proud of a guy like that. Kanopka, the puck is in some skates near him. Michael Guff with it. He's hit as soon as he touches the puck by DeLille. Play in the neutral zone for Kanopka. He loses it to Karup. Karup over Otto's line. Tries to get a step on Sellers, working it behind the net, looking for the wraparound. Was Karup, Kanopka's on him. Boone with it. Boone for Campbell. Campbell had gotten a little bit of speed on the right side. Boone in the corner, and he catches an edge and hits the boards hard. Shot right on Thompson. You see this coming a mile away. Boone, tripped going in. And then he got hit, and you can hear Smola yelling, you know, let him up, go away, let him up, let him up, but he... There's no intention by Boucher to go anywhere further than the top of the back of the jersey of Boone. And so Boone immediately dropped and started tossing. And Boone, not having a whole lot of ice in this hockey game, with a five-goal cushion, Killers putting out the guys with less experience, hoping for them to get some experience. And I really don't think it's the sort of experience you need for your young players to have. See, watch what happens here. Boone just trips and falls and puts his face off the dasher. That's got to hurt. Boucher won't let him up. He's saying let him up. And then... I think we got a good audio take on this. Just listen to this one, folks, as he collides with the dasher board. Here it comes. The double whammy. Usually when you get hit twice, it's uh, as a result of a couple of players. Boom! Sound like he gave almost as hard a hit to himself as he got from Boucher. And he won't be too proud of himself for that move, but you know what? At least he finished it up fairly decent. Jonathan Boone from Bell Island, Newfoundland. Got his bell rung a little there. Kind of hit like a rock, wouldn't you say? 
There's your score, six to one, as I ignore my partner here in his quips. <laughs> the faceoff coming to the left of Jeff Thompson. 13.36 to go here in the third period. As the penalties are assessed, Kanopka and Walsh on the draw. Faceoff comes right back to Thompson. He gives it to Hines. Hines for Pinizzato, and the puck once again in the crowd. That time the fans were paying attention. They grabbed that one right away. As the lines have been juggled, little Tootin out there with Kanopka and DeLille. And that's kind of interesting, actually. You see Tootin out there with those two. Some young fans enjoying this hot game. It's not, not just the guys on the ice enjoying the game. There's all kinds of people here enjoying the hockey game. Sock two samples. Tootin flips it right into Toronto's end. Cation. Cation with it on the right side for Pinizzato ahead for Walsh. Walsh takes a shot and hits Sellers as that puck came in full strength. On the transition is DeLille. Can't get it any further than Cation. Cation turns around and knee to knee hit right at center ice. Kanopka and Cation as they slash each other and then Hines jumps in. What the heck is Hines doing in there? Cation. That, I don't understand that at all. Cation and Kanopka were doing quite fine amongst themselves. And out of nowhere came Hines. And this is exactly what got Toronto in trouble in a previous game, is guys jumping in after the fact. Take a look how it started. There's a couple of stick work going on here. Little hook. Kanopka comes in. There's the knee to knee on Cation. And Cation's upset, and so he should be, because that was a dangerous system. He gives a stick, so they trade slashes. Then in comes Hines. And Kanopka's lucky he wasn't severely hurt as he went flying into the St. Mike's bench as the two traded sticks. And you gotta figure there'll be some major, major penalty handled out to Mark Hines. But it'll be interesting to see what Kanopka gets and see if Cation gets anything. Hines giving it to the fans as he leaves the surface. There's the knee to knee. You called it right, Peter. That was direct knee to knee. Keisha upset. Gives the stick to Kanopka. Now, Kanopka is not this kind of a player. In case you're wondering. Of course, Peter, before that, we saw one of the Ottawa 6 7 defensemen take the slap shot right in the bread basket. And I think it was Sellers. And this gives an opportunity to let you know about other things happening around the league, and you can do that best by watching OHL This Week. Tune in, learn all about exciting action around the OHL Thursdays, 8.30 p.m., right here on Rogers Community TV. Yeah, Luke Sellers took that slap shot, and he was about six, seven feet away from the Toronto player who took the shot. But to his credit, Sellers... He made it to the bench. That's all we saw from there. But man, that's I don't care what you're wearing. When you take one in the bread basket on a slap shot, it hurts. There's no two ways about it. It just hurts. <laughs> McAllister will be taking the draw against Ryan Walsh whenever they decide to drop this one. 12.58 to go in the third period. Ottawa on the power play here. And a little bit fortunate considering the angle that Kanopka's leg was going knee to knee. Van Hoof, Jeremy Van Hoof backhands it cross ice for Justin Davis. Davis turns around, sends it into Toronto's corner. Alfredson on the near side. Backhands it towards McAllister. Cation with it now. Cation gets it down the ice. And Seamus Kotick will steer it for Nick Boynton. Boynton along with Alfredson. Alfredson has it now over the red line, dumps it in. Thompson deflects it into the corner. Davis is there with Rasmussen. McAllister on the loose puck. Taps it further into the corner for Davis. Rasmussen ties him up. McAllister with it. Back to the blue line for Boynton, shooting it. That's blocked in front. Looks like Alfredson may have gotten a piece of that. He's limping out there. Behind the net, Davis to Alfredson. Alfredson 
Pass to Van Hoof at the blue line ahead for Alfredson. On the near side, Cation doing a great job of killing off the penalty, sends it down the ice. And Alfredson's going to head off as he is hurt, but isn't that the second time that Nick Boynton has drilled Alfredson on the shot from the point on the power play? If it's not Nick Boynton, it's definitely the second time that Alfredson's been hit by a shot from the point on the power play. Van Hoof. Hits Brian Campbell with it. Campbell over the red line, getting some speed. Campbell moving in, shoots, scores! Brian Campbell, again on the power play, it's 7-1 Ottawa. Brian Campbell, not known for his goal scoring ability, as that is only his third of the season. But what a beautiful goal. He's tried this more than once. It's not usually there for him. As he just splits the defense, the defense was way too wide apart. Mark Popovic couldn't stay with him. And Campbell just makes a good first move. And Thompson can't stay with him. And you, you know for certain that when the arena announcer here announces flying Brian, it will be no coincidence. And that's why he's got that moniker. As you saw him just burst through everybody. Scored by number 44, it's a beauty, Dave proved me wrong, call me a liar, he didn't use it. <laughs> Public address announcer here, James Sabolski with editorial abilities. <laughs> Cava on the loose puck, out in front, Thompson makes the initial save in the corner now. Zoltek for Campbell, Campbell shooting it. Saved by Thompson, loose puck, cleared to the sideboards by Toronto. And into the neutral zone. Ryan Campbell with it. Campbell over the red line. Gains Toronto's in. Campbell trying to center it for Talbot. Talbot's stick was all tied up. Thompson is down and so are his players. Thompson did a great job at getting to that puck. No matter who was in his way, it was his own player. He still dumped him. Take another look at... Thompson reaching in under the legs. I think that was Popovic. Oh, Brian Simpson going over backwards. Tessier taking the draw along with Boucher. Cation has it. Right off the face off behind the net. Cation being bothered by Toot and has to turn around in the corner. Looking to tap it ahead for Boucher. Boucher. Back to Cation in the corner. Tudin doing a good job. Gustafson. Gustafson looking to center for Tessier. Cation on the far side. Gets it out of Toronto's end. Into the neutral zone for Gustafson. Luke Sellers with it now. Sellers has to turn around as he's forced back. Boucher eyeballing him in front of Seamus Kotick. Sellers about faces. Off the glass. And Guff keeps it in at the blue line. Guff backhands it in right behind Seamus Cotting. Walsh is on that. Boucher with it on the near side. 9.55 to go here in the third period as a shot is right on, and Seamus Cotting makes the glove grab. Well, Cotting has gone a long time between saves as he finally got some work in the net. But the real key to Seamus Cotting is he has to stay awake. When you don't get a whole lot of shots, you get a little cold, and the shot comes in. And you see, actually, was. I don't know, Peter might have been going wide, maybe from that angle off the side of that, but Kotick just wisely, he realized that the 6 sevens didn't have any control of the puck, and that the St. Mike's Majors were outworking them, getting to the puck before they were, so they said, he says, fine, I'll grab it, slow things down, let my guys regroup, and away it goes. And the faceoff ensues to his left, McAllister with Carew. Point gives it to DeLille. On the near side for McAllister, that fails to click. Keefe is back on the ice. McAllister with it. In the neutral zone. Being bothered by Cannon. Keefe now over Ottawa's line. Keefe on the right side tries to make the move on Zion. Zion can't get it out. Cannon is bothering him into the neutral zone. Comes the puck and Popovic. Popovic beats DeLille. Backhand pass to Karup. Karup for Cannon. Cannon over the blue line. Boynton is on him. Karup with it. Karup making the move. On McAllister, Zion is being held, and Keefe with it in the corner. Alfredson on him. And Tudin there, there as well. And Keefe is bodied hard onto the ice. I'm going to get a penalty here, and it looks like it'll be coming against the 67s. 
Yeah, you got it. McAllister picking up the first penalty, and Alfredson nails Keith. And I'll have to see what's going to happen here. As all guys are paired up. As you got Doolin Banjos on the PA and Doolin players on the surface. Looks more like a hug fest, actually. As referee Small is trying to keep McAllister and Karoop apart. Finally get some help from the linesman. As Schilling and Kitt race back into the play. Take a look how this started. There's a little bit of a spear that I saw in front of the net. There's a bit of a high hit. McAllister then gets the roughing call right there. Considering what's been going on, that's a pretty lame roughing call. But then all heck breaks loose. And we get that big hug fest going on. As we got a whole pile of guys, it's almost like that whole front line is over in the penalty box. And it looks like it all started when Keefe was rammed into the boards again, the second time in this contest that he's uh, gotten a couple of splinters in the chops. I think Alfredson just assumed he had a penalty as he's been pulled out of the penalty box and has come back to the player bench. He said, well, I was out there roughing up. Oh, that's right, because he didn't see the penalty call. Pat Smola had his arm up, but Alfredson had hit Keith and, and put his arms up and said, say, look, I didn't do anything wrong. Then the penalty was called, and Alfredson just assumed it was him. <laughs> Is that a guilty conscience or what? Take a look, there's the first hit, there's no call, that's the call right there. And then Alfredson, oh yeah, Alfredson pushes Keith head first. Gives him a little help with the hand, guides him into the boards, and I can see why Alfredson would have a guilty conscience. And while Pat Smola takes care of all of these penalties here on the ice, Neil and I, before every contest, we sort of hit the internet and try to find out team records, and Ottawa fans will be pleased to find out that most, if not all, of the offensive records for the Toronto St. Michael's Major are owned by one Steve Zorick. And then last year, the, the man who was minding the nets in St. Mike's, Buyar Amadovsky, also set the record. Of course, St. Mike's a renewed franchise, so record's not really carried over from before. So Zorick setting all the marks. And you got to think with 34 goals, 27 assists, or total 61 points, those are marks that can be beat. Most, most franchises have the guy in the 70s or 80s as their leading goal scorer. Points over 100 and assists in that same sort of vein. And we're almost ready to get underway here. Pat Smola indicating final changes for both teams with the arm up. As we're still waiting to see what the man situation is going to be. There's nothing up on the clock. So we're thinking that it's all offsetting as we see five on five skaters. Joe Talbot will take the draw against Ryan Walsh just outside Ottawa's line. And Toronto control the faceoff. Cava with it now over his blue line. Ahead for Walsh. Walsh breaking into Ottawa's end. He's knocked off the puck. Justin Davis there with it. Davis has Zoltek streaking on the left side. Zoltek moving in, a shot way wide, nowhere near the net. And all the way into the neutral zone for Brian Campbell on the near side for Van Hoof. Van Hoof dumps it in. Justin Davis chasing after it. Cava's there first. Simpson knocks it into the neutral zone. Campbell with it. Ahead for Zoltek. Zoltek taps it for Davis. Davis is in all alone. Shoot. Scores! Justin Davis in it all alone. Makes it 8-1 Ottawa. And one thing Dan Tesse told me is that what the 67s do best is that they seem to outplay teams in the third period. And they started a little earlier. They started in the second period, but if you look at the score sheet, the first goal of this hockey game was scored by St. Mike's. It's been Ottawa 67s ever since. And Justin Davis finally gets an opportunity to show what he can do as he sent in on the breakaway. And a good job. He's getting checked hard. Good back checking by St. Mike's. Trying to get the stick up. Thompson just gets frozen. It's almost like he wasn't even there. Turned into a statue, and Davis just picked his corner. Decided top right. That's a good spot. Put it in there. I think Seamus Kotick wants a repair done to the ice surface down by him. Ottawa looking to win game number 10 in a row. Easy to figure out what their uh, stats in the last 10 would be then. As we get to do this all over again on Sunday afternoon.
2 o'clock game time right here on Rogers Community TV. Former 67 Steve LaFleur and the Owen Sound Platers in town to take on the Barber Poles. Jeff Thompson feeds it ahead. Mike Guff with it now on the near side. He loses it. Van Hoof turns it right around into the neutral zone. It's Ren Rasmussen. He'll send it in. Kotick steers that in the corner. Campbell with it. Campbell behind the net for Van Hoof. Van Hoof spots Zoltek, and Zoltek deflects it into the crowd. 7.51 to go here in the third period. It's 8-1 to one Ottawa. Well, Peter, it's good time to start looking at our candidates who you think you put on a three-star selection. And you thought the guys like Chris Boucher played a hard game, sure. But, you know, you have to think of the way the physical nature of this game has actually been a, a real big factor. And you have to look no further than number nine, Matt Zoltek, who's played a tremendous game physically. 67s are goons. I don't know. I guess this uh, young fan, I guess this fan's not really used to or uh, familiar with the St. Mike's record, <laughs> as they have been in a couple of brawls. Jonathan Boone streaking in. Hopped on a loose puck. His shot nowhere near the net in this corner now. On the near side, Boucher is in there with Guff. Boone is there. And so is Miguel DeLille looking for goal number three here in the contest, Neil. Well, just to go back to that fan, just to give you a little bit of an idea of what you're looking at is give that fan credit. He's like his hockey team. He comes into somebody else's barn. He lets it be known what sort of game he's got. And there's no doubt about it. Everybody knows. That's all you want from a guy. You give him 100% effort. And St. Mike's are still putting out the effort. They're just not getting the scoring opportunities that they were getting in the first period. Off the draw, DeLille sends it in the corner. Boucher is there. Both Boucher's on the ice. Alfredson can't keep it in. Luke Sellers with it. Sellers goes cross ice to Zion. Zion back to Sellers. On the left side for Alfredson. He loses it to Brock Boucher. The Majors send it right back in. Seamus Kotick sends it around the boards for Henrik Alfredson. Alfredson for DeLille. DeLille, he gets it out. In the neutral zone, Boucher's bothering DeLille. And Michael Guff loses it. Luke Sellers sends it ahead for Boone. 6.50 to go here in the third period. Sellers wraps it off the boards, gets by Cation. Alfredson streaking down the left side. Henrik Alfredson. Walsh knocks the puck off his stick. Guff has it. He'll turn around and send it into the corner. Brian Campbell is there. Campbell has to turn around. Simpson doing a job on him for checking. Campbell gets by Simpson. Campbell taps it ahead. Cation on him out in front. And Tudin. Was coming down the left side hard, looking for the pass from Campbell. Walsh now sends it to center. Van Hoof with it. Gives it to Campbell on the far side. Campbell returns the favor to Van Hoof. Back to Campbell. Campbell ahead at center. That's intercepted. 67 now gained Toronto zone. Two to works it in the corner. Tudor is hit hard. Let's go, let's go. Simpson. Simpson looks like he injured himself on the hit against Tudor. Looks like he might have popped his shoulder out there. The 67s have to go back and retrieve their own end. It's Campbell. Campbell and Van Hoof have been there for a long time. Gustafson with it. Gustafson over Toronto's line, trying to get by Boucher. Out in front for Zoltek, saved by Thompson on a glorious opportunity for Matt Zoltek. And that would have definitely increased his potential for being a game star if he had it got that. But that was just a great pass and a setup. But you know, one thing they always do it differently, they're still matching lines. You still saw that Teste's line was out against Keith's line. But what you're not seeing is Teste didn't jump to the attack as fast each time. He's playing defense, he's shadowing Keith now. They're worrying more defensively about their system than they are offensively. And that was one instance right there. Talbot. Sorry, Peter, I was just gonna try to finish the thought. Is it Tesse still with that sore back is out there getting physical with guys? Shot coming in from the point now behind the net. Davis is there. Ahead for Talbot. Talbot drops it back. And Davis can't catch up to it. In the corner, it's Rasmussen. Talbot comes up with a loose puck, a shot, and that's deflected into the crowd. Look out. That was a flutter one. Tough to read, I guess, on the pick. I was watching the fans. They couldn't see it. They knew it was coming. They just couldn't see it. 
Let's take a look at it. I recognize those shirts. That's Nepean. I used to play there. Great colors. Black, red, and white. Kind of like the new shirts uh, 67s are sporting. Still not the barber poles, though, Peter. The unique style of the barber poles. Just, that's why it's called the third jersey. I don't think they're going to be changing the shirts, just adding to the merchandising. That's Jeff Hunt at his best. Talbot on the draw, looking to center it. That's picked up by a majors player, Pinizzato now, over the red line. He gets into Ottawa's in a shot, and Seamus caught it, got turned around. As that fluttered towards him, sort of fooling Mr. Kotick. On the left side, Zoltek works it behind the net. Zoltek out in front for Talbot. Talbot had to go to the backhand, couldn't make anything happen there. Zion, that gets by him, Cannon. Cannon around Zion, he's hauled down. Cannon's behind the net now. The 67s, Matt Zoltek is there, so is Talbot. The Majors applying some pressure in the later stages of the third period. Out in front. And they can convert. The 67s get it out into the neutral zone. Cavo off the boards. Intercepted by Davis. Davis backhands it into the corner and the line heads off on a change. Cation. Cation. Gets by DeLille into the neutral zone. Cannon dumps it in right on Seamus Cotting. Four minutes to go here in the third period. It's 8-1 to one, Ottawa. Peter Tremblay and Neil Turcotte, Howie Mooney downstairs. And this is the OHL prime time. Jeremy Van Hoof in the neutral zone, backpedaling. Feeds Alfredson quickly right back to Van Hoof on the right side. It's Nick Boynt, the captain of the Ottawa 67s. Alfredson catches up to a loose puck, waves off the icing. Ellis on the right side. Ellis trying to center it for Simpson. Simpson almost had his bell rung by Nick Boynt. The 67s in their own end is DeLille. Off the glass and into the crowd. Howie Mooney is standing by downstairs. Let's send it there, Howie. Make note of these programming, uh, make, a note, make a programming note, folks. Our next oh, broadcast on OHL Primetime will take place this uh, Sunday. And Mississauga Ice Dogs will be taking, the, uh, taking care of the uh, Toronto St. Mike's Majors. That'll be at 1.30. And at 2 o'clock for Ottawa viewers, it's Owen Sound. Uh, at Ottawa at the Civic Center. Decided that the uh, the points are in for Mississauga. As Seamus Connick gets turned around backwards and looking a little lackadaisical on that shot in. Boucher taking the draw. Along with Kanopka, 67 control is John Zion. Gives it to Campbell. Campbell backhands it for Boone. Boone feeds Kanopka over the red line. Thompson swings it around on the near side for Michael Guff. That fails to click as Guff had that go by him. Zion has to hang on so Tudin can get out of the zone. The delayed offside is waved off now as the linesman's arm comes down. Campbell throws it into the neutral zone. Tudin gives chase. Popovic on the left side. A shot right on Kotick. That taken by Brent Mulder. They want to take this opportunity to mentioned one of the guys on defense, number four, Jonathan Zion, fellow alma mater of the Pian system, who has just been tremendously composed back there on the point. As every play he makes, he's just sitting back and just making the right decision. You know, some guys, that get in the zone. James Kotick has been fighting with his tonight as he makes a, an easy play there. But Zion, see how composed he is? He's just like, okay, I can take the puck if he puts it down. I'm just... He's just in the right place, trying to make a, the, the, the easy play. He's working smarter instead of harder. And he's been doing it all night, doing a tremendous job of it. He's not been too physical, not overly physical. Unlike Nick Boynton coming across the middle with the elbow raised up, trying to take the, uh, the helmet off of one of the St. Mike's players. And whatever's in the helmet, possibly. Yeah, that too. Brian Campbell stops up behind the net. Carew, four checking. Zion gets by him. On the right side for Gustafson. Spots Tessier. Tessier shoots it in. Thompson picked off by Tudin. Tudin centering it. Karoop was there. Kenny Karoop works it out into the neutral zone. Tries to get by Gustafson. Campbell on the loose puck. On the near side for Zion. Tessier. Tessier is rubbed off by Rasmussen. On the far side, it's Campbell. Campbell can't get it out as Karoop keeps it in. 
A shot directed towards Kotick. Zion stops it up, and we're going to get another penalty. And I think we're getting an interference call against Gustafson. Dantesi getting a little bit of a rub out and then not taking, uh, not being too appreciative of the attention he was getting. And he's still laboring out there. He's trying to go around, stretching it out. Dantesi's gonna go over. See the hit on Campbell, Campbell just bounces off. And the shot towards the net. Flex into the corner. And you see when Zion was breaking out of the zone, you see the composure I was talking about, he comes out of the corner and just waits. There's a man on the boards beside him. He waited for that man to make a commitment one way or the other, and he went to the boards, so Zion went up the ice. He just waited. He didn't do anything until somebody else made a move to force the issue. As you see Mulder leaving the surface, and with only two minutes left, and he gets a, sorry, 202 left, and two minute minor. Minutes for interference and to St. Mike's number 14, Brent Mulder, a 10 minute misconduct. Oh. Time of the penalties, 17.58. Interesting. Popovic shoots it in. Walsh has it on the near side. A little further in for Ellis. Ellis gives it to Simpson. Simpson in the corner, tries to drop it for Ellis. Boynton on the loose puck. And now on the near side, Talbot, he backhands it out. You have to think that Muller was maybe a little too uh, brazen or flippant with referee Smola, and hence the uh, early shower. A minute and a half to go here in the third period, and dare I say the hockey game. Cation with it at center. Backhands it into Ottawa's end. Nick Boynton is there. He'll backhand it right back out. Cation with it. Number 71 mentioned early on in the game. There were a couple of them in the game, but Lance Galbraith got the gate. Talbot, Talbot over Toronto's line, gives it to Tutin. Talbot with it, backhand shot, save, rebound, they score! Joe Talbot makes it 9 to 1 Ottawa. And that's also a shorthanded marker as the Ottawa is halfway through their man down. And again, it's Talbot and Tutin. The penalty killer, main penalty killer for the Ottawa 67s is Brian Kilray, still using his main guys, as that makes me think that maybe Brian Kilray doesn't appreciate what St. Mike's have been doing with running their players, and he's looking to put a few extra up on the board, because this is normally, with an eight, uh, seven gold cushion, this is normally when you see the rookies getting some time killing penalties, and that, and he's not, he's going with his number one crew each time. So there's a little something going on here at coaching as well. Joe Talbot with his second shorthanded goal of the season for the 67s, now leads the squad. Mark Bell, who's been out with an injury for quite a while now, has the other shorthanded goal for Ottawa. Under a minute to go here in the third period. Karup over Ottawa's line. He's bodied off the puck, and Alfredson sends it down the ice. Toronto still on a power play with 34 seconds to go and only 35 to go in the game. Mike Goff with it over the red line. He'll dump it in. Campbell is there. Campbell turns around and hits Alfredson. Alfredson's been hit three times in the game. You think he'll have something to say in the changing room? Matt Zoltek whips it down the ice. It's one thing to get hit by the other guys. Play at center, Boucher. Can't wrap it in any further than where Luke Sellers is, but Guff works it in. Boucher now in the corner, gives it to Karoop. And that will effectively end the hockey game here. Nine to one is the final score as the 67s are congratulating Seamus Kotick. Seamus Kotick didn't have a whole lot of saves to make after the first period, but when he was called upon, he made the saves well. Even recovered from a bad save at one point as uh, a soft goal almost got through as he looked like he was taking a mental nap there for a minute. But Seamus was able to maintain his composure and stay strong during the game. Guys like Joey Talbot and Dan Tudin played a heck of a game. Flying Brian Campbell, number 44, good job. And Matt Zoltek, I think really one of the keys in tonight's hockey game, just with his physical presence and his force out there on the ice. And he managed to pick up three points, a goal and two assists as well. Again, specialty teams doing the job as at the start of each period, uh, sorry, second and third period, it was the power play unit that got on the boards. Take a look here, there's DeLille from Campbell and Zion, Guffson, Boynton and Sellers, and then Campbell and Van Hoof, all three power play goals, and then Davis, Zoltek and Campbell, and then Talbot from Tudin, and that's a shorthanded marker, so four out of five 
our specialty teams in the third period. And just think how more potent they'll be when Mark Bell returns to the lineup as uh, Pat Smola is talking with Mark Osborne. 14 to five, the shots on net officially in the third period. So 31 to 20 is the finals, but now we got the three-star selection. From 67's, the big man, number nine, Matt Sultan. Tonight's second star, he scored a beauty of a goal, number 44, Flying Brian Campbell. And tonight's first star, from the 67's, number 25, Joey. Well, I don't usually get three for three, but <laughs> I got it that time. Joey Talbot just played a great game. Like I said, he and Tudin were just tremendously uh, effective in the late going of that of the first period, and then they picked up and kept it going in the second period. And with Tessier hurt halfway through the first, he still managed to keep the line going, still managed to keep the tempo going. Tessier comes back, wins all kinds of face-offs, and that line just kept going the whole game. There is your final score, 9-1. to one. We've got Howie Mooney and some final thoughts right after this. All right, we're down here with the first star of the game, Joey Talbot. Joey, uh, congratulations, a big, big game. Yeah, it was a really big game. Uh, you know, we came up big. Uh, they came out fighting hard. You know, they have just come off of a three-game winning streak, so we knew they were going to be tough, and uh, they got a couple of snipers on their team, so we knew we had to look after them, but uh, the outcome uh, was great. But, I mean, it was a great game for you, a very physical game, though, wasn't it? Uh, are you guys comfortable with that? Yeah, uh, well, I know I'm comfortable with the physical uh, presence. It kind of, you know, gets you going. Uh, you know, if someone hits you, you know, you want to get back into the game. You know, the best way to do that is to score. So uh, it was a big game for me, and uh, I'm happy to play it. Uh, yeah. It's got to be tough, though. You lose Lance Galbraith uh, very early in the game. It forces everybody else to sort of uh, be a little tougher out there. Yeah, well, we're a pretty close team, you know, and we all look after each other. Uh, you know, we don't have a big fighter, but, you know, I think everyone can throw them, and, uh, you know, if, if they have to, and if they have to, well, you know, that's great. Like, Danny Tootin jumped in there. You know, that was great to see that because he doesn't really fight too much. And, uh, you know, it just shows uh, team spirit and, you know, uh, how close we are. I know there is a lot of camaraderie on this team. You guys do hang around together a lot. You do stay up for each other. You did that tonight. And uh, congratulations on being named the first star. Thanks a lot. All right, thanks, Joey. Thanks. All right. On minor hockey night tonight here at the Civic Center, the 67s defeat the Toronto St. Mike's Majors by a score of, what was it, 9-1. to one. There you go, right on the board. Tune in on Sunday, folks. We will have more of OHL primetime then. Until then, I'm Howie Mooney, and for everybody here at Rogers Community TV, thanks for watching. We will see you on Sunday. Bye-bye.